Full topographic conditions. Ah. <laughs> but the advantage is no flooding. <laughs> right. Where are you? Greg, uh, Greg. Yeah. Where are yes. You? Are you just in your backyard or are you? No, I'm nowhere near my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <Hi>. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> That's a nice virtual background. That's the Ridgewood background. <laughs> That's great and filled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're up at uh we're up at Lake Placid. Nice. That's a nice place to be. Yeah. 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 Nice people up there. Yes. Strange strange times though. Yeah. It's too bad that you have to do this while you're there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else do I have to do? You know what I mean? I don't know. Have a cocktail? <laughs> yeah. Wait, we can't do that? <laughs> Just kidding, Bruce. No cocktail. Make sure you knock the video out when you reach for the glass. <laughs> I can blur anything out. Oh, perfect. Still waiting on people, right? Yeah. Dean, am I missing anybody in the uh attendee? I'm looking to see. Yeah. Serge is here, Greg is here. Yeah, I'm looking to see in the attendees if I don't see um, I don't see Diana no. yet or Dan Daniel. All right, there we go. Hello, and there's Matthew. <clears throat> hey guys. Uh, Dylan. Yes, sir. Is there? Well, first of all, good evening. Um, is there? Um, is there anyone from the public on the line that has told you that, that they want to make a public comment? Yes, one person. All right, good. Diana is there. You can put her on. Okay, hold on. Just minimizing this. Here's Anne. Three people out there? Wow. How many? 23 is what it says. 23 participants, 10 are us and 13 attendees. Yep, well, we've got a busy, busy agenda for sure. Um, is there anybody who we think is supposed to be joining us but is not yet logged in? Um, you mean from the board? Dan yeah. I, I don't see Daniel yet. All right, so we'll give him a minute. Serge? Yeah? My thought, perhaps, is you'd want to, after old business, Look at the DOE application next. I think that's probably a good, uh, a good to idea. Get some people keep get some people up the line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's a fair point. So we'll do that. Um, we'll we'll announce that once we call the meeting to order. Uh, Dan just texted. He said just one more minute. And he's going to dial in. So if everyone um, can just. Be patient for just another couple of minutes. We're going to get our last uh, board member on, and then we will call the meeting to order.
Yeah, there's people raising their hand to speak, but we had to wait till public comment, right? That's correct. Yeah. So, One is Bill, everyone audience. can hear me, right? Yeah, everybody can hear you. Okay. So everyone, just please sit tight. Uh, we understand that this is kind of unusual, right, doing this uh, virtually, but we will give everyone a chance to speak at their given time. There'll be public comment um, once we open the meeting, and then each individual application will give members of the public the opportunity to ask questions and uh, make comments. So just uh, sit tight. Um, Dylan, did you see the chat from Mr. Yosef, whether we can... Okay. I responded to him. I said we can hear, we can see him. Got it, got it, got it. Now what did I do? I do not see him, Dylan. Should I see him or just you? No, you can see him too. If you go, if you click down on the bottom for pan, uh, for participants. Okay. There, then it should show up on the uh, right. You should have panelists and attendees. If you click on attendees, you'll see the list of all the people attending. Oh, I see. I have to ask for it. Okay. All right, you know what? Why don't we get started? Dan will dial in, hopefully before the beginning of the Hills application, but we could at least uh, call the meeting to order. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, because this is a virtual Zoom meeting, I'm gonna read more of the agenda than I normally do. Um, <clears throat> for the duration of the coronavirus health emergency, Village Hall is closed to the public and meetings are held with participants at remote locations connected to conference software provided by zoom.us. Members of the public are invited to view meetings live using the Zoom client, which also allows them to raise a hand and contribute with voice and video when they're invited to do so during public portions of the meeting. So please make sure that if you need to speak, you could raise your hand or send in the chat to Dylan, but um, please also bear in mind that it'll be during the times where I call for the public to ask questions or make comments. Um, all right, so we're gonna call the meeting to order. Um, we'll start by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag. Uh, the of the United States of America, okay. to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation. for God, uh, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, okay, so this uh, statement is required by the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by posting on the bulletin board to Village Hall, by mail to the Bridgewood News, the record, and by submission to all persons entitled to same as provided by law of a schedule including date and time of this meeting. Uh, please note that a curfew of 11 p.m. is strictly adhered to by the zoning board. No new matter involving an applicant will be started after 10.30 p.m. At 10 p.m., we will make a determination to advise applicants as to whether they will be heard if an applicant cannot be heard because of the lateness of the hour, the matter will be carried over to a future meeting to be determined by the board at 10 p.m. This is important for tonight because we have a number of applications on the agenda. Uh, we're trying to be uh, you know, cognizant that people have been waiting. So we've had multiple meetings via Zoom since we began the process. Uh, we normally have two meetings a month. I think this month we're gonna have five. So we really are trying to work through all of these applications, but the reality is that we, we you know, I think we all have a, um, just a, a time limit for where we can be productive on Zoom. So I really don't think we're gonna be starting any applications much later than 10 p.m. tonight. Uh, I'd like to get through everything, but um, if the time doesn't permit, there'll, there'll be plenty of other opportunities uh, as Zoom meetings continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, okay, so Jane, please conduct roll call. Sergio Allegra. Here. Greg Brown. Here. Gary Negritz. Here. Diana Rule. Here. John Papitro. Here. Isaac Lebo. Here. Matthew Bandel. Here. Daniel Perlman. Here. Okay. Um, now we need to approve the minutes of June 9, 2020. I want to make a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes from June 9, 2020. Okay. Isaac, do we have a second? Second, Matt. Okay, Chairman Allegra? Yes. Greg Brown? Yes. Harry Negritz? Yes. Diana Rule? Yes. 
John Papitro? Yes. Isaac Lebo? Yes. Matthew Bandel? Daniel Perlman? Yes. All right, great. Um, next, we have non-agenda items. Are there any board members who would like to make comments on matters not on the agenda this evening? There being none. So I now is the time for members of the public to make comments on matters not on the agenda this evening. I believe we have at least one. Um, if we could unmute that gentleman. Anthony Fasano, there we are. Great. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Anthony Fasano, 671 Eastern Court in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Um, good evening, board members. Thank you. I'm gonna keep this real brief. Um, we're just seeking guidance on a matter. My, uh, my wife and I and our <clears throat> three, three young kids, we live in the uh, area behind the duck pond. Um, obviously, the past three months, all of us in town and beyond have been kind of homeschooling and, you know, with summer looming and, and no camps really open. Um, we decided to look into getting a permanent pool to keep the, kind of the kids busy over the summer. Um, my wife contacted the building department. We inquired about the permanent pool options uh, for an above ground pool. And we were told that we would need both a permit and a variance since technically we have two front yards since there's a street behind us. So they told us that, you know, at a timeline, we, we wouldn't be really be able to get that variance probably till October um, based on everything. So we decided against the permanent option, but we were able to find a portable plastic pool. Uh, we purchased it. My wife and I set it up, you know, in 30 minutes. We filled it up and the kids have been using it um, together. And then last week we found out uh, from the town that we needed to take the pool down due to the variance and the permit issue. So, you know, we have, obviously we have no problem with going to get a permit from the building department um, now that we know that we need it for again, this plastic kind of portable plastic pool. Um, in fact, we did already speak with the building department and we explained the situation. We already emptied, emptied the water out of this, this pool. Um, however, you know, this really is a, a temporary pool. There's no plumbing, there's no heating, there's one electric plug that gets plugged into an outlet for a simple basket filter. Um, and we're here to see if there's either any way, we're seeking guidance basically. We're, we're trying to find out if there's any way, one, that we don't need a variance since it is temporary portable um, and we're planning to take it down in a few months because um, there is a reference in the code to portable pools being exempt, I believe. Or second thing that we're looking for is, is there any possible way of providing some kind of an exemption, a 90 day waiver or something um, so that we can just work with the building department and get the permit. Um, and then if when we take it down in a few months, if we need to get a variance, if we're gonna put it back up, we certainly can, but under the conditions. Um, I should also mention that in our backyard, there's a retaining wall for the road behind the house. So we're not on that back road, we're well below it. So it's not like the, it's anywhere near a road or anything of that, of that nature. Um, you know, honestly, the application fees and expenses for the permit and the variance are probably going to cost more than this pool even, even costs. So again, just to be clear, of course, we understand that if any, we were able to get a waiver, if we don't need a variance, we still would need to get the permit from the building department. And we've been in contact and we've been talking with Mr. Yatik there, um, to make sure it's fenced in and safe, but we're just kind of seeking guidance from the board and council tonight on the matter and seeing if, what options we might have. Thank you, chairman. Thank you, Mr. Pisano. So really, uh, I'm going to turn this over to our board attorney, Bruce Whitaker. Um, guidance. Mr. Pisano, did you get a letter or confirmation from the zoning officer that uh, variance relief was required? We didn't get a letter. Um, the, uh, the town was in the area cutting trees down. And someone from the town mentioned it to us and then ended up talking with uh, the building department uh, by phone. And they told us that we need to take it down. And then I did speak to the building department, uh, Mr. Yaka, the other day, and I told him all the water would be out of it immediately. And we drained it. And uh, he said he would come and take a look and, and make sure that was done. And he hasn't come yet. Um, that was last week. And, uh, and I did tell him that I was going to try to see if there was any way that we wouldn't have to take it down. But we immediately took the water out. So it's been all phone. It's been all phone correspondence, sir. Okay. So the the way this has to be handled is by a state law. It's not a law with the village of Ridgewood. Um, the state mm -hmm. municipal land use law. Uh, when you have someone, I guess, from the building department here, who is serving as zoning officer, but if the zoning officer says that you require a variance, 
the board doesn't have the ability to waive what the zoning officer says or, or writes in a letter to you. What you have the right to do under the municipal land use law is to challenge the zoning officer's decision. And at the same time, if the zone, to, the, to the zoning board, to this board. And at the same time, if the zoning board uh, has the right to also grant the variance if they feel the variance is necessary. Um, but unfortunately, the board doesn't have the right under state law to grant any exemptions, waivers, 90 day uh, provisional type of use, et cetera. And I know, and it's unfortunate, I know, we all know that these are exceptional times, but there were a series of executive orders that were issued, including some executive orders pertaining to land use, but the executive orders did not give any board or any official the ability to waive um, any of the zoning requirements in a municipality. So your steps would have to be to go back to the zoning officer to determine <clears throat> that a, a variance is required, and then you'd have to make the application to do that. And I, unfortunately, I believe with the agenda that we have, um, that may actually occur after the swimming season. I don't control agendas, but okay. it's, a, it's a first come, first serve. There's a lot of people have been waiting in line. As the chairman said earlier in the meeting, I think we're having four or five meetings this month just to try yeah. to play catch up. So, okay. So that's that's the that's the way it would have to go. So the first step would be to check with the zoning officer and get a ruling, and then if they uh, confirm that you do need a variance, then you would have to seek variance. So okay. First, I just have a question. Does this? I mean, when I drive by many homes with young children, many of them have pools. Um, this rule applies. All these pools should be permitted. That's, is that correct? Uh, you know, it's not for us as a board to determine. It's up to the zoning officer to uh, interpret, by state law, interpret what the ordinance says. But does our town make the rules as to whether or not a pool needs, like a, his pool in particular, but these pools that people are putting in that have little motors just to keep the water circulating so they don't have to dump them every time. Our town has made the ruling that they want to have these permitted um, through through the zoning or, or the building department, correct? Is that, or do you not know that? Maybe Jane will know that. I, I have no knowledge about, this is the first that this has come to my attention. I just have one question, Mr. Whitaker, for the, I mean, when you said to go to the zoning officer to get the official ruling, um, in the code, the village code, it does refer to these port, like a portable pool, not having to necessarily require the variance. So it would be up to that individual then to determine what a portable pool means, correct? This, you are correct. The state law gives jurisdiction to the zoning officer to initially interpret a zoning ordinance. Okay, and, and the zoning officer in this case would be the building department, I guess, because I spoke to them. Is that right, or is that? It would either be that or Jane. Have you seen Paola involved with this? Um, I haven't really heard about this, so but that would be Paula. Yeah, so I... Where is the pool located? Just I'm misunderstood, I think. It's just in the backyard, our backyard. The problem that we're having is because there's a street in front of us and behind us. Technically, we have two front yards. So because we have the pool in our backyard, but it's not, you know, they're saying tech legally, it's not a backyard because you're on another street. So because of that, we need the variance. Otherwise we would have just- So could apartment. you, are you the corner of Eastern and Pershing? Yeah. So can you, there's setbacks for zoning as to where the front yard can right. end. So can you just move it so you don't, so it's truly in your backyard and not in your front yard? And the problem is, well, the problem is it is in our backyard, but the backyard legally is, a, is considered a front yard. Quote, you have quote. two front yards. Right. So but, when you right, take but every, every, every house has a backyard, even if it's, believe it or not, even if it's not in the back. It could right. be that your side yard is considered the backyard. The problem so is, is our the side zoning yard. Officer, did the zoning officer point out what your legal backyard is? Yes, yeah, she, she did, but there's just not enough room on the side for it. So... And, and, and to your point, um, if we took the 40 foot setback from the back road 
like because you have to use the front yard setback you did the, there just wouldn't be enough room that's the problem we're having so again it just happens because we have the, the road behind us and we have two front yards otherwise we would just go to the building department get this paperwork filled out and be done with it but unfortunately i guess that's i'm just uh, maybe i'm a little confused you have eastern park you have eastern court yeah i'm looking at a map okay. Pershing avenue yep and you said there's another road there's a road behind it, which I believe is Wall Street. That's another dead end, like a cul-de-sac. We're in between the two cul-de-sacs, Eastern and okay. um, Eastern and Wall. Do you have do you have three front yards? Um, no, because to the one side of us is like a town easement, like a walking path easement, and I believe that's the side yard. And then we have our front yard on uh, and a front yard on both roads, and then a neighbor on the other side. Like our, like where we live, Pershing turns into Eastern. Like if there's a curve there. So you, you're, you, you're what? So the issue is Eastern and Wall Street are your issues. Right, because Wall, Wall Street's the issue because it's in our backyard. So it's making us have that as a front yard. So he's not a traditional corner house. He's got a, two, two roads bordering him. Right, it's not a corner house, right. There's a road, road on each side, but then land on both sides of us. So and there's, maybe no that's, room, there's no room on your side yards at all to put the pool? Not enough room between the house and the yard lot. And like the patio, we have a patio on the side. Can you put it on the patio? Um, I guess we can look into that. I'm Diana, just trying to give you solutions that will actually get your kids. No, to I use it. I, you know, I appreciate it. Believe me, I'm, I'm trying to think through them through, yeah. I know I can play around with that. And, and maybe your point actually may be a good point in that it's not a typical corner lot. Maybe if I explain that to the zoning officer who wasn't actually at the house. Yeah, maybe, but if you have a patio, you could, they can sell you to put it on the patio if it's not in the front yard. You know what I'm saying? There's, right. If there are alternatives. You okay, may the not question I would ask, Anthony, the question I would ask is, where am I legally allowed to place this without a variance, just a permit? Okay, and that's a good question. It's possible that you can't, right? Like, so for example, I live in a house where if I wanted to do an addition, even if I went out one centimeter in any direction, I need a variance. Right. That's my lot, that's my house. It may be that there is no place where you could legally put it, but that's the question that I would ask the zoning officer. Okay, is there great. anywhere on this property I can put a pool? A pool? Okay, great. And, and when you go to the zoning officer, bring your survey with you. Okay, yes, I have it right here. I'll bring it. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you everyone for giving me a few minutes. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are still in the public comment section. Are there any other members of the public who would like to make comments on matters not on the agenda this evening? So please virtually raise your hand or send a chat. We have one dialing caller. They're not able to raise their hand. Should I just have them come in? Just yeah, just ask. They could be for another application, but at least unmute them. What we could ask a question. If it's okay. a public comment. Seven oh four. Well, six seven oh four. Can you hear us? Hello. Hi, do you have a public comment? No, no. This I I'm on number four today, Chris Aleppo. So this is not. Uh, I'm having some technical issues on my computer, so I called in also. Okay. Very okay. Good. So I'll just put, I'll, I'll just go on mute. All right, very good. All right, so no one else, right? No, no one else has raised a hand or, or chatted. All right, very good. So we will now move on to old business. This is a matter of John and Allison Hills, an application to construct an addition and covered front porch, which will result in a front yard setback of 35.7 feet, where 45 feet is required, at 317 Down Street, Block 3202, Lot 26 in an R2 zone. This has been continued from May 26, 2020 without further notice. I have the Hills in. Who else needs to come in for them? This is John Hill. It would be Dave Mayland and Ron Eng. Ron is most likely under his architectural name, Format, Formatic Active. Got it. And Dave Thurston? Dave Mayland. Oh, wow. Okay. Good evening. Yep, yeah, this is Ron Ang from Farm Active Architects. Good evening, uh, Good evening. Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board. 
Good evening. John and Allison Hills. The um, same individuals who were sworn in and testified last time will be testifying this evening? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Okay. Please proceed. Please proceed. You're still uh, on the road. Go ahead. Thank you again. This is uh, David Malin, the attorney for the applicants, John and Allison Hills. We were before you back on May 26, where the board had made a number of comments, uh, which my uh, applicants have taken into consideration. I've met uh, multiple times with the architects and have submitted to you revised drawings and plans, uh, which have been circulated in connection with this meeting. Um, the architect will comment on those in greater detail, but in some, they have softened the front elevation, uh, reduced the, the size of the porch and actually the encroachment of it into the front yard setback, as well as uh, reduced the height and the pitch of the roof. Um, with that being said, I believe that the uh, applicant, uh, Mr. John Hills, would like to say a few comments to the board before we go on to the architectural testimony. Thanks, Dave. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Thank you again for having us and giving us the opportunity to um, bring our revised plans to you to you all tonight. Um, so really, as, as Dave mentioned and uh, Ron, our architect, will get into the detail. Um, I just wanted to say that thank you for the last meeting after listening to the feedback. Um, we made new revisions and we realized we've actually made, in our minds, a better design. Um, something that we feel is in harmony with the streetscape of the neighborhood. Um, and and as, uh, as Dave mentioned, we did submit one exhibit um, as per Mr. Perlman's um, uh, advice last time regarding set setbacks adjacent to our uh, properties along the north side of Down Street. We have also reduced the front yard setback um, as uh, a point of consideration raised by uh, Mr. Negret, so I apologize for your, uh, my pronunciation if I've got that wrong. Um, and then with respect to, to Ms. Rule's comments um, regarding the height, we reduced the height of the roof um, to more scale the neighborhood. We minimize the second floor volume, making it more modest to blend in with the neighborhood. So in all, we do believe we've made a right balance between height and aesthetics in our new plans. Um, and I do also want to note that um, as per Mr. Bandelt's comment on the last meeting, um, we did agree that we would not enclose the front porch at any point in the future. So um, Ron, our architect, will go into the details, but thank you again for giving us the chance um, to present tonight. And okay. with that being said, unless the board has uh, direct questions of the applicant um, himself, I would uh, like to call uh, Mr. Ron Ang, the architect uh, responsible for the drawings. Yeah, before you do, just let's get board members uh, the opportunity. Does any board member have any direct questions from Mr. Hills before the architect uh, testifies? Doesn't look like it. Please proceed. Okay, good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Ron Ang. I think we spoke previously. The, uh, you do, I want to first make sure that you're in possession with the revised drawings. For the record, put down the uh, revision date that you have and how many Please, pages. It's 611. Uh, Dave, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and it pages one through six. That is correct. And uh, for the record, we'll mark those as uh, I believe we're on A3 uh, jointly. That's correct. Okay. Uh, furthermore, you have the exhibit from uh, Lentelmi Currens and Associates, the surveyor who we contracted to examine the front yard conditions of neighboring properties on Down Street. That will go to mark as A4. And for the record, that's uh, dated June 11th, revised as of June 16th, uh, and signed by Christopher uh, Lant uh in connection with the setbacks of the surrounding property owners. Right, that revision was requested because though they had marked dimensions for the front yards, they did not, uh, we also asked them to go back and look at each individual building and express whether or not the porches were covered or open. So the other thing I want to point out of the survey is that it's, it's the dimensions are drawn to the front of a significant building, which is generally a stoop or a porch. So not the stairs and not necessarily building wall. So this does uh, change to some extent our discussion from previous where we were talking about a front yard requirement 45 feet and how we were expressing that our front building was 39.5. Uh, 
but these dimensions are talking about front of porch, and therefore the survey and comparable properties uh, are, you'll look at the offset, what he regards as offset in column four. So 317 downs, which is the property in question, is uh, we are talking about an offset in feet of 35.7 feet. So when we look at uh, the major discussion previously was about the front yard and the encroachment within the front yard. And uh, you'll see that we've made many accommodations uh, to bulk, but the initial conversation when the variance was about the covered porch. So the covered porch right now will project into the front yard to the same dimension as the current stoop. So that's a point I wanna, if I, if I can reinforce with some of the other properties that they're of very similar nature. And uh, there is, in order to accomplish that, there was a reduction in the depth of our porch. There was a reduction in the size and width of our covered of the canopy on the porch. So those comments from previous, the previous meeting were taken into account. So there were some reductions, but uh, part of the important discussion here is that the existing projection remains. So Ron, just for clarification of the board, the existing the por front porch as proposed does not go any further than where the current steps are on the property uh, leading up into the house, correct? Yeah, correct. And with regard to the other properties uh, listed on A4, none of those uh, comply with the 45 foot setback, is that correct? As surveyed, correct. And with that aside, can you go into the detail of the numerous other changes that the applicants have made in connection with the board comment from the May 26 meeting and uh, specifically walk them through what was done to try to accommodate the, the board and uh, their previous comment? Uh, so we can look at, if we look at the revised drawings, let's start there. You will see that on, um, let's see, we can direct you to, first of all, uh, yes? On the revised drawings, if you can just direct them to the specific plan sheet so that uh, yes. everyone can follow. Yes, I think we'll start with the site plan. So this is uh, item one on page one. So you can see that right now the dimension 35.7, let me zoom in myself is expressed in the site plan as the existing, as the proposed location of stoop, but that is also the existing location of the stoop as shown in the survey. And that was a reduction from the prior application where that was uh, originally 35.7. They brought that back a foot to keep in line with the existing stairs, is that correct? That is correct. And go on. So right now that, that leaves a projection, um, the, the existing stoop, was three for 10, that's what we're maintaining, it's on the drawings, and the canopy, the covered uh, portion of this is the same dimension. And the uh, overall square footage of the porch, that's been reduced as well, can you explain that? Uh, has been reduced, uh, let me check my notes, it has been reduced from 158 square feet to 142 square feet. And the uh, not only has the square footage been reduced, it also the, the width of the porch has been reduced as well. Now that stops at the property line, is that, or not the property it stops line? stops at the building, it's aligned okay. with the building edge. So it's re reduced by about three feet. Uh, similarly, the columns have been reduced to just lessen the impact on scale on the street. So some of the proportion, we're very focused on proportions of the facade. And so when we made changes to the height and the ridge line and the roof, the roof pitches, there were also some some modifications to the porch. So these modifications were made to balance the application more and really bring it into the, the streetscape. So they reduced the, the width of the porch as well as the encroachment into the front yard setback um, and also even the column so that it, it wouldn't be as um, aesthetically pleasing for, uh, for the board as well. Is that correct? That is correct. And in if, you, if I point you back to the, the survey, the adjacent property survey, you'll notice that there are two properties that are within uh, of two feet of a similar, that are covered. In this place, I will point you to uh, 311 Downs, which is a neighbor, which is 37.9, uh, has a 37.9 foot setback, which is a covered porch, and 353 Downs, which is 37.8 feet, 
uh, which is also a covered porch. There are uh, some properties that have have a greater encroachment into the, the front yard setback, but they uh, they have open porches or open stoops. But again, the, the modifications that were made to the proposed porch, this is to fit into the nature and character of the surrounding properties. Is that correct? Very much. We believe so. And outside of the, the physical changes to the porch itself, what other changes were made to the plan to accommodate the comments of the board from the last meeting? So specifically, we had a great deal of discussion about roof pitch and the overall height of the, the building addition, the second story addition. So pitches were changed such that the overall height of the building was reduced from uh, 27 foot one to 25 foot three. So approximately a two foot reduction with a change in pitch. Uh, you'll see in the elevations, I do not know if you have access to the previous submission, but if so, you'll notice that the, the main roof and in addition all the, the, uh, the gables are all reduced. And the, the gables were reduced and even the overhangs were reduced as well, is that correct? That's correct, they were reduced from 18 inches to a foot. So the overall roof area has lessened uh, certainly from view from the street. And this was to balance the application as a whole and to take into the comments of, I believe, Ms. Rule at the previous meeting where she had concerns with regard to the, the pitch of the roof and, and potentially the, the height of the project as well. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and some accommodations had to be made. There, there was some storage attics. There was some mechanical space that was all lost when we reduced the, uh, the interior space, partially because we have code minimums um, so m many of these interior attic spaces that we were using for uh, accessory uses, um, mechanical and storage were, were removed and they had to be relocated. So they compromised on the, the attic space as well. I believe the second floor went from 8.8 .8 inches. Now it's only eight feet uh, flat. So they, they have been compromised by the applicant uh, throughout the home to try to accommodate the, the consideration on what the project would look like from the, from the street as well. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, what other changes to the, the project were made since the last submission? So the, the, there are some setback, the, the overhangs, as, as Mr. Malin mentioned, were reduced. The, there, the, we said the, the porch canopy, the overhang was reduced. The front porches, we were expressed, were reduced. The, um, let me see what is dimensionally. We mentioned that some of the details have been lessened column sizes. Attic space, the, this is interior. These are, uh, I'm looking at my notes, but many of these are interior modifications that we had to make because of the lowering of the main structure. So th throughout the project, there were compromises that were made up on behalf of the applicant to achieve the visual aesthetics and architectural value from the streetscape to better fit in this project to the the existing streetscape that's uh, currently uh, at Down Street. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, with that being said, are there any other modifications that were made that you would like to specifically comment to the board, or can you address any uh, questions that they may have at this time? I think uh, we right now questions would be the next step. Okay, very good. So we're going to go as we've been doing. Or just one by one. So first we'll start with Jonathan Pepitro. Any questions, sir? I just want to ask about the attic. Is there any access to it, a pull down door, or is it just totally closed off? Right now, these are the rooms that are left are, are what we call cathedral ceilings. So they're open ceilings to a pitch roof. There were attic spaces that we had set back in the, in the middle of the building for mechanical. So those have been removed. Okay, so there's no access to that attic now at all. It's all just closed off. It, it, well, it's not closed. It's open, but there is no attic. I see. Okay, understood. Thank you. Why is there no attic? There, there may be a few a crawl space here and there to get to eaves, but it'll be on the order of access panels. Nothing like a, a stair, like an attic stair. So I'm just trying to find out what the headroom is. <clears throat> The headroom the building I is now twenty nine feet twenty nine nine and the 
No, no more 29. The 29 nine has been reduced. Well, why am I looking at a revised drawing that doesn't say that? And last time it was 30 some feet, which is why you needed a variance for the roof height, unless you went with a 912 pitch everywhere. The top of the, the highest ridge at this point is 27 foot four. Yeah, so the variance from the last time was specifically just for the front yard setback. It wasn't for the roof, but we were making some adjustments because um, Diana had some suggestions about the roof height and the roof pitch, which when we went back and looked at it, we made the adjustments to scale it down a bit to bring down the volume overall. So the roof, the height of the building. The original roof was in excess of 30 feet. It, it. I don't see this dimension. I don't see a 30, I don't see a 30 plus dimension, sorry. So, sorry, this is John Hills. On the plans that we originally presented in May, the height of the roof was submitted as 29 feet on sheet A1. Correct. Which is 29, nine and three quarter. Correct. Right. Yeah. Thanks, John. John, on the elevations on drawing five as well on the previous submission. Right. But in any event, right now, with the current plans before us, the height of the roof does not require variance. That is our understanding. So, why don't we move on to, and Gary, we'll get back to you as well. Uh, Isaac, any questions? Isaac's not eligible on this one. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry about that. Neither so, is John, I mean, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I think you could um, ask questions. You could ask questions, right, Bruce? Yes. Bruce, you can ask. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Greg? Greg Brown? Um, yeah, hi, everybody. Um, no, I don't have any questions at this time. Okay, uh, moving along. Dan Perlman, any questions? You're on mute. Oh, Dan, you're, you're muted. No, I'm, look, I'm looking at a couple of things. I don't have any questions right now. All right, very good. Um, Matthew Bandelt, any questions? Uh, no, just uh, one quick question. So um, another board member had asked about attic space. So if I understand it correctly, basically on the second floor, you're going to be having cathedral ceilings rather than having um, like uh, any usable attic space other than uh, a small access panel. Is that correct? There's some areas where there's, there's less than five feet that will close off or accommodate um, odd, odd sections where, where roof lines meet. Okay. So there'll be some areas in the interior where there'll be some crawl space and attic. Okay. But for the most part, yes, you'll have high, high ceilings in the rooms. Got it. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Uh, Diana Rule, any questions? Just a quick question. On the second story in the front, that bump out, what's the distance from the bump out? What's the setback on that bump out on the t second floor? On the second floor, okay. Uh, let me... Third, 39, the, from, from the front property line, right? From the front street Yes, line. yes, yes. The existing bump out is at 39.5 feet. Okay. So you need not only for the porch, but for the existing structure as well. Correct. You need a variance. Okay. But that the that's the exist the existing bump out on the ground floor is at thirty nine point five. Yeah. So, yeah. but to go up, you need a variance for yeah. that that area as well, kind of. That is correct for the second floor. For the second floor. Yes. It's all the same variance, though. You. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, I just the okay. one's a solid structure, one's an open. Understood. Yeah, so I just wanted to know the exact amount. Um, Anything right. else, Diana? I have a question. 
All right, Gary Negritz, back to you. Any any additional questions? I'm just trying to follow up on that uh, attic space. So, give me another minute or two. If you can go to somebody else. Sure. Is there anyone else who's got any questions? Based I'm not sure you those? understand. Hmm. I don't know what that was. That's right, Gary, it's okay. Take your time. Uh, the attic space is just to, if if you're looking for them in the plans, they, they really only occur over the bathrooms, kids and hallways. So in the rooms proper, you'll go, you'll see the underside of, you know, whatever for spread out framing, but it's really in closets and, and, and bathrooms that you'd have attic spaces above in the corridor possibly. So it really is practically impossible for anyone to ever use any space up there for any type of um, living space? Very, very difficult. It'll just be storage only, likely. Right. And, and there's no access, there's no staircase, there's no pull down stairs. Pull down, I, you know, we haven't, I believe you'll just have an access panel, they'll have to carry a ladder, whether or not they do a pull down, but you won't be able, it won't be standing height. I believe in some places, Certainly at the lower part of the eaves, it, it goes to nothing, but at, at the highest point is maybe four foot six. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. Uh, Gary, any other questions on this attic or otherwise? I just don't understand how I can get four foot six when I've got a, uh, from the if if you I took the flat ceiling at eight feet on the second floor, I've got eight foot eight above it. Now I realize you said the bedrooms all have uh, full ceilings, so that eliminates that. So that means it, but you got a lot more than four feet over the bathrooms and the. Uh, I don't think you, you didn't say you had a cathedral ceiling in the bathroom. No, there there is a there is a hung ceiling in the in the bathrooms, so there is space above them. I mean, there, the structure takes up there is dimension structure insulation roofing, so it's true it's not uh, not five feet worth, but it'll end up being several feet. If I may uh, ask the board, is it a concern that any of this space would be converted to living area or potentially? Uh, stipulate. We could certainly stipulate or put a, a uh, agree to a condition that uh, it wouldn't be converted to uh, additional living space at uh, any further time, if that's a concern of the board. No, it's just an arithmetic issue. How many square feet have a ceiling greater than seven feet? That's all. Well, and it doesn't have to have a ceiling. It doesn't even have to have a floor. It can be measured from the top of the ceiling joist on the second floor to the underside of the rafter and the roof. And that's the, that's all. It's just about the arithmetic of square feet of gross building area. That's all. And it's, it's not earth shattering. I just like to have all the numbers right when they leave this board. That's all. Understood. I, I defer to the architect for those calculations. Uh, we can provide a building section at the, that location to show the thicknesses of the various rafters and choice ceiling structure. And you'll see that what, what we have left over is not, maybe at the very peak of it, you'll have a bit more. Um, but certainly at the areas where you get up into it, if it's not at the absolute top of the ridge, you know, you, if you frame the, the you'll see at the top of at a ridge beam, it could be a 12-inch ridge beam, but the actual dimension there, when you have the rafters hit, plus the roofing, plus the sheathing, plus the insulation, yet you end up losing more than a few feet. So if you're asking the total building height is 27 foot four, uh, excuse me, what the dimension you were saying at... Uh, Drawing is 29. Uh, no, 27. 27. 
so 27 foot at the topmost ridge. If we right. take the worst case, 27 foot four, I mean, we'll lose four feet almost immediately from structure uh, from the, uh, the, the lower floors, which is eight, 16, 17, um, 18 from 27, that leaves nine minus four. So that's how you get five feet. And it'll be maybe six feet at the, at the, at the ridge. But as soon as that rafter starts to drop, you know, in no time, you'll be at three or four feet. A raptor's at a nine twelve pitch, right? I, pitch is 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 nine twelve. That's the only dimension I can find on the documents you gave me. Nine twelve. I think it's the, well. Think the largest one is seven twelve. Okay. I believe it was previously twelve nine. I I just want to make sure that you you both are on the same page for the revised plan as opposed to the previously submitted one at May 26th. The May 26th was, was at 12.9, and at the May 26th meeting, we were at, a, uh, I believe, a 29 and three, nine and three quarters height as well. So the applicant has made concessions off those, and, and that's on the revised plan that should be before you today. 16, 17, 20. So between top of finished ceiling, uh, Mr. Negris, but the top of finished ceiling, our calculation, so top of finished ceiling on the second floor and top of ridge is uh, 17 less than 20 is seven foot four. So seven foot four, if you take away the structure of the ceiling and take away the structure of the roof, th th that leaves you four, four foot and change. Five feet if we had no insul if we have no finish. And that's the top, the topmost ridge. The lower, the lower uh, gables are 25 foot fourths or top. So in those cases, you'll have two and a half, three feet. And Ron, correct me from, from the May 26 application and the plans that were before, we lowered the roof by uh, two feet, six inches. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah, something short of three feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Gary? That's it. Okay. Um, are there any other questions by board members before we open it up to the public? We have two from the public. Yeah, so now is the time for anyone from the public to ask questions of the applicant, the applicant's attorney, or architect. Yeah, we have three. Hold on one second. I'm going to invite the first one in. David Thurston. Mr. Thurston. I'm, this is David Thurston. I'm not here to ask questions, but to speak on behalf of the applicant. All right, so just pause one second. I just want to make sure if there's anyone out there who has a question, we give them the opportunity to ask questions, and then we'll open it up for comments. I have one other person raising their hand. Steve Ranchless. Mr. Ranchless? Uh, we just want to comment that we have no objection to the application. <laughs> okay, so hang on one second. We're going to have comments um, yeah. any moment now. Dylan, is there anyone else, Dylan? No, those are the only two that were raising their hand. All right, so we're going to go to Mr. Thurston first. This is uh, for comments. Mr. Thurston, so, if you would raise your, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please give your full name and your address. My name is David Thurston, and I live at 332 Libby Avenue, but of particular consequence to the application, I live on the corner of Downs and Libby. I've lived here since 1999, and I spend a great deal of my time in the backyard which looks directly across down street from the Hill home. And um, from reviewing the plans and the updates, we're in complete agreement with them that it will upgrade the street. And we find it uh, very desirable from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, and just as another comment with respect to the height of the home, 
I'm sure the board knows that on the south side of Down Street, except for the house directly to the west of me, which is across the street from the hills, all the homes are far and above 27 feet. And even on the north side of Downs itself, there are a series of five or six capes similar to the hills. But then at the east end of the street, you have several homes which are also well above 27 feet. So in terms of streetscape, it really falls right within the, the aesthetic of the street. So we, we wholeheartedly think that it will um, be good for the street, be good for the town, and we support them 100%. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. So next we will move on to Mr. Ratzlis. Um, I know you kind of made your comment, but why don't you get sworn in and make your comment on the record? My name is Steve Rackless. Uh We have lived at... Uh, okay, just hey, one hang second. On one second. For, the, for the record, Mr. Ratzlis, you raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give me the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Now please give us your full name and address. Uh, my name is Steve Rackless. I live at 311 Down Street. We lived here for about four and a half years. And we are directly next door uh, to the applicant. Uh, so if you want to proceed with my comment, we have no objection. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, we have no objection to the application. I think that it will, in fact, uh, improve the value of our property and the street uh, in that uh, it will certainly make the uh, the applicant's house more uh, livable. And I don't see that uh, changing the front to the same uh, distance from the street as we are I would make any difference. That's my great. Comment. All right, thank you very much. Um, anyone else on the line who's raised their hand or one other in the chat? Yes, Carolyn Hancock. Yes, hi. You want to make a comment in uh, regards to this application? Yes, please. Raise your right hand, please. Yep. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give me the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Please pr proceed. Uh, hi, I'm Carolyn Hancock, and I live across the street. I'm at 320 Downs. I live across the street from the hills, and I've been here 32 years. And um, I would absolutely love to see a beautiful house across the street from me. I wish that my ceiling was higher, uh, you know, the way the houses were built and mine is 1950. And I'm sure you're aware that all around the corner for me on Northern Parkway, we've had a tremendous amount of building done and the houses are just really becoming so beautiful. They're enhancing the neighborhood. The Hills House will enhance our neighborhood. And I agree with Dave Kirsten, if you go up and down the street, there's a lot of houses, Tudor style, lots of other styles with much higher um, roof lines. And it would just be wonderful to start to enhance our end of the street too. So I'm obviously in great support of this. That's it. That's all I have to say. Great. Thank you very much. Dylan, anyone else? That is all. All right, great. So back to Mr. Malin. Any other uh, testimony that you're going to proffer? Uh, I don't believe we have any other further witnesses tonight. I will just say in closing, I believe uh, you've heard from the applicant uh, and the uh, architect as well as the exhibits presented, including A4, which was the survey study of the surrounding uh, property owners all on Down Street, which uh, none of them complied with the 45 foot setback, I believe based upon the testimony tonight in the previous uh, meeting on the May 26th. Uh, the applicant has shown that they have a hardship of the location of the existing building and the existing streetscape. Um, the proposal is consistent uh, with the existing neighborhood patterns and wouldn't be a detriment to any surrounding neighbor, neighboring properties as uh, testified to by the, uh, the neighbors themselves saying that this would enhance the, the property uh, value in the streetscape. But, and for that reason, I respectfully request the board uh, grant the variance as set forth in the application. Thank you very much. Hearing is now closed, so we will open it up to board members for a deliberation and or a motion. Uh, I would just say from a, from a setback perspective, uh, the reduction in the front porch to the setback of the current stoop and the reduction in width 
um, along with the um, calculation of the predominant setback on the street. Uh, I think uh, it goes a long way in curbing the concern that we, or that I, that I uh, suggested and I think was confirmed by some other people. I think that goes a long way toward quelling that concern. And so I thank the applicant for uh, providing the information and, and making the, the change to the current design. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, uh, no, the, sorry, Diana, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, we're probably going to say the same thing. The only concern I have is the restriction that um, the front porch would remain open. Um, right, if exactly. there's, if anyone was going to uh, make a motion. Gary, um, I know you, you know, had a lot of concerns with the attic. Is there any, uh, assuming this, uh, this, you know, other board members are keen on approving this. Is I there any type the, of stipulation yeah, you want? The footage up there is de minimis. So at this point, I really don't have any objections to what they're proposing, the modifications. I can't really made. say. Pardon? Uh, can you hear me? We, we, we can hear you, Gary. We can hear you. All right. So does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the currently submitted plans with the stipulation that at no time will the uh, front porch be enclosed. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Greg Brown? Yes. Gary Negritz? Yes. Diana Rule? Yes. Matthew Bandel? Yes. Daniel Perlman? Yes. And Chairman Allegra? Yes. Thank you for making those changes. Congratulations. You're approved. Good luck with your renovations. Thank Thanks you, board members. Thank you, everyone. Thank Enjoy. you very much. Stay safe. Good yeah. luck. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do next is hear, uh, we're going to move the agenda just a little bit. Um, guidance from our attorney, I think, is, is wise. We're going to hear now the Peter and Melissa Doe matter. Uh, Dylan, can you just make sure that um, they're on the line? Um, Melissa Doe, yes. Okay, and uh, who else will be testifying? Anyone I think else? That's it. I think that's it. Okay, so she's on. So we can go ahead and get started. Uh, oops, sorry, just close the agenda. The matter is Peter and Melissa Doe, an application to permit the installation of an air conditioning condenser unit within the front yard setback at 140 Liberty Street, block 4002, lot 15 in an R2 zone. Good evening. Good evening, I'm here with my husband, Peter. Good evening. Okay, if you'll both be testifying, Mr. Ripple will swear you in. Yeah, you both raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Peter? Good. Yes? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. Um, well, first of all, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for uh, uh, getting us onto the agenda and actually for advancing us a bit. Thank you very much. Um, we, we live on a, a corner property, and so we have two front yards, similar to an earlier debate in this meeting. Um, and uh, we, our, our house is a Victorian house uh, from, I think, 1904. Uh, it's, um, but the, the best form of air conditioning units are ones which have external condensers. The size of a house means that um, we need three condensers. Two of them are safely tucked away in backyards, but uh, one of them will have to be um, in a front yard, which is actually the side yard um, by Evergreen uh, Terrace. Um, and that's, that's what this application is about. All right, very good. You wanted to talk about uh, the location and the photos that you've submitted, et cetera? Um, sure, actually, Melissa, do you want to? Uh, um, you submitted the pictures and I think you're more yes. familiar with those. Okay, so 
the the condenser unit has to go in that corner section um, along Evergreen, right below our dining room. It will be below our dining room in our kitchen, tucked away in that corner. Um, the air conditioning company has said that the only reason that location must be there, I'm sorry, I'm reading this, is that uh, putting it in the back of the house around the corner would be against the manufacturer's specifications as ductless refrigerant lines cannot extend longer than 82 feet per air handler. So there's no other location in our house that would work for this condensing unit that would meet your set Ridgewood setbacks without violating the manufacturer's specifications. Yes, yeah, so the intention is that the uh, condenser unit would be in that little corner, uh, about 32 feet setback from uh, the road, uh, or from the, the, the end of our property, in fact. Um, the dimensions of a condenser unit are 42 inches high, so three foot uh, six inches, 37 inches wide, 13 deep. It would be placed on the ground, so it would be no higher than 42 inches. And the intention is that we put shrubs up in front of it so that it would not be visible from the road. Okay. Your testimony is that per the manufacturer, there really is no other place that you can place this without requiring a variance? That's correct, yes. Okay, do um, any other board members have questions? You said it has to be a certain distance from the air handler? Uh, it, <laughs> I mean, again, I'll, I'll read this and we're quoting yeah. from uh, the, uh, the uh, installation uh, company. Ductless refrigerant, line, refrigerant lines cannot extend longer than 82 feet per air handler. Um, so does the house, the house doesn't currently have air condition, uh, central air, right? It, it does on the other side because um, we, we needed three, well, we need three units. We have two, uh, they've been installed um, in, in backyards and so, um, one side of a house is very pleasantly cool and the other <laughs> half is, is not so cool at the moment. I guess I, I'm, a, I'm a little confused. Maybe I can clarify it, Diane. The, he has three ductless units. He doesn't have central air and a ductless all ductless units. So okay. one of them has a limitation on the run refrigeration lines. So he does not have a duct like central air each room having its... What I heard him say at the beginning of his presentation is he has three ductless units, but this one because of the manufacturing limitation can't, just doesn't go anywhere else to service the unit it has to service. That's if you correct. look at if you look at his photo one, you see the uh, table. There's a ductless unit under the window on the house. That's one of the ones. So I assume it's going to be similar to that. That was a question. Sorry. I assume it'll be similar to that. What you put in the corner where you're anticipating to put the third um, unit. Is that correct? Yeah. But which photo are you looking at? Uh, photo num I was looking at photo number one. It looked like the outside uh, patio table. Are there umbrellas in the photo? Yeah. Yes, yes, it would be, sorry Pete, let me get to that. Yes, there's a unit behind the orange. Oh, sorry, it's actually, I don't know, it's actually photo six. DOE photo 06, sorry about that. But yeah, the one we're looking at is a um, picture of our backyard. Um, there are, there's a blue umbrella to the yep. left and mm -hmm. a red one in the middle, which uh, obscures, but not completely, um, the, uh, the condenser unit that, that we have there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so these are basically, Diana, another word for them is a mini split, mini split system 
and they're not like your typical central air with the huge um, unit that sits on the floor outside. So it would look similar to the one we were just referring to. It would, uh, but it would be lower. Uh, but this one is uh, placed um, on on a stand. Um, in the interest of aesthetics, the, the the one we're seeking a variance for would be uh, placed on the ground, and therefore would be no higher than forty two inches. Um, I would be. <laughs> I think that you might find that it will be higher than 42 inches because with those units, there's, depending on what kind you're getting, there's a snow question. So they can't be obscured with snow um, for the, if you decide to use the heat in the summer. So I think I'd be a little careful with saying it will not be higher than 42 inches because whatever we do approve i certainly wouldn't want to see you have to come back here if it tends to be a little higher than that yeah i appreciate that clarification and let, let me read what i said and i, and I think yes I, I don't think i've necessarily uh, reflected it exactly uh, yeah. what's written here by the, the installer is this is the unit that we are going to sit directly on a pad with no stand uh, the one we're looking at in the picture is on a stand um, to keep below the dining room window, though, is the final piece. So it would, uh, that, that's as high as it um, would go, is um, it, it would be below the level of the Below the height room. of the dining room window. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Uh, All right. So you, um, you'd be okay with a stipulation that if this were approved, you would stay at that height and that it would be screened in somewhat with some shrubbery? Yes, or, or, although the, the 42 inches, yes. I mean, it, it may go a little bit above that to um, the, the member's point, the board member's we could, point. We could say approximately 42 inches in height, but no higher than the lower part of the dining room window. Correct. Yes. And the board in the past has stipulated boxwoods, um, usually at uh, two and a half to three foot height. I'd planting, that's what you've done in other resolutions for the screening, if that's what you wanted to do, we can specify that too. Can we, can we say screening that will cover the whole, if it's 42 inches, it goes up to 42 inches. At planting? Well, you can put a slow growing box with it, it takes 10 years before it'll get up to 42 inches. I mean, I, I, the whole point not, is, you don't want to see it from the street. Right. So no, we don't cover it so you can't see it from the street. For me, actually being a boxwood or I, I just want from personally, I just don't want to see it from the street. It is fairly close to the to that side of the street. And it's high up because there is that wall. So it is at eye level. Mm -hmm. So I would yeah, like whatever the height is of the unit, I'd like whatever greenery. So you can't see it from so boxwood plantings to be at a height to be above that of the air conditioning unit. Yeah, we're, we're absolutely aligned with that. We don't really want to see it either. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure you don't. So that's all as long because it's up at a, at a higher level from the sidewalk because of that con the the wall on that yeah. side. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So whatever is going to block it completely. Yes, agreed. Yeah, absolutely. I would just make one suggestion. Make sure you manufacture and don't plant too close to the unit. Mm -hmm. You gotta get air in and out of it to be you know, functional. That just follow the man manufacturer's distance recommendation. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Before we open it up to the public, are there any other questions by board members? There being none. Uh, Dylan, we could open it up now for any members of the public who have questions. If you're listening in and you have a question here, raise your hand virtually or send in the chat. We'll unmute you. I'm not showing any. Okay. Same with comments. Anyone? Go a second here. Doubtful, but 
Never know. <laughs> All right. So we will now, unless some, you know, the applicant has anything else that they want to say, you're welcome to make a closing statement. Um, no, just thanks again for uh, uh, for hearing our case. Yes. All right. Thank good you. Hearing yeah. is now. All right. Thank you. Uh, the hearing is closed, so we will open it up for board member deliberations and/or a motion. I'd make a motion to approve as presented with the restriction, um, as we discussed earlier about the bushes being. Uh -huh same height of the top height of the condenser unit. Um, they are and a, the, uh, yeah, due to the, the house. The, the unit also being no higher than, well, pro, what did Bruce say, approximately 42 inches, but no yeah. higher than the bottom of the dining room? Window? Yes. Correct. I would say the, the, the current height of the dining room window. Yep. Yes, so it should say below the window. Do we have a second? Second. Matthew? Okay. Um, Greg Brown? Yes. Gary Negritz? Yes. Diana Rule? Yes. John Papitro? Yes. Isaac Lebo? Yes. Matthew Bando? Yes. Chairman Allegra? Yes, you are approved. Good okay. luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good Thank night. you. Stay Thank safe. You. Okay. So let's keep moving. Um, all right. We'll continue to do business. Moving on to the matter of Mohammed Yosef, an application to construct a second story addition, which will result in a front yard setback on Pershing Avenue of 36 feet where 40 is required and a rear yard setback of 18.7 feet where 30 feet is required at 6 Pershing Avenue, block 3504, lot 21 in R2 zone. I see Mr. Yosef is logged in. Mr. Yosef, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, very good. Is there anyone else who's going to be testifying? No. This evening? No. Okay, so it's just you? Yes, sir. All right, so we'll get sworn in then. Mr. Yosef, you raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. Okay, uh, we live in this house since. May I speak? Yes, please. Yeah, please. Uh, we live in this house in uh, June of 19, uh, oh, sorry, 2018, and we plan to site the house, uh, but uh, immediately we uh, found out that the house had a huge problem with closet space. We have three bedrooms uh, on the top floor with only a two foot uh, closet in each room, uh, hardly enough to accommodate three. Uh, so we searched and uh, we hired a few um, uh, construction um, uh, companies and they suggested that we do enclose on top of the garage um, and uh, do some kind of a walk-in closet using the existing uh, door of the closet in the master bedroom as an entrance to that uh, uh, walk-in closet. The walk-in closet really does not extend beyond uh, the uh, existing uh, house line. So um, if you picture with me, uh, the, the, the garage is maybe 25, I think, 20 feet, or 25, I think, feet deep. And the room on top of that garage is recessed about eight feet, okay? Uh, so what we plan and we hope to do we literally just build two walls, one in, uh, in the front and one on the side of the house to enclose that pocket of eight by 12 to do a walk-in closet. Um, and and, and um, I think when I send the survey to some of the uh, neighbors, 
uh, at least three came forward to because they were confused. They thought we are building a whole second floor and they didn't see where and how. And, and, and I think, I believe I related that to Jane. But what we are really doing is just a walk-in closet, eight by 12, uh, without compromising the integrity of the house. On, and, and, and just like the previous um, uh, case, uh, I can assure you, it, it, would, it would not do anything but enhance the value of this house and the value of the property around. We are not taking anything from the uh, lines of the house itself. We are not coming out or in, just enclosing that pocket. If you look at, I don't know if the, my pictures are numbered as I sent them. So if you look at a picture I sent, uh, and I think it's, it's named IMG6881. Is that the number you have to, or they were numbered differently? So if you're talking about the name of the file, yes, yeah, my, my name, my file is called something different, okay. but I am looking at Bruce. You have uh, you have the pictures that were sent in, yes. Eight pictures, right, Mr. Yosef? Forgive me, there's eight oh. photos, yes. Yes, it's. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can see if my camera is working and I will be able to point at it. Go on. Um. This one. No, we can't. We can't. Uh, we are on video. Okay. So it's one of the pictures. Uh, actually, two of the pictures will clearly show you the intention and the plan, and as well as the architect plan. Um, that it's only the, ha the the garage, like I said, it, it built on the borderline of the building. Uh, like say one third on the right side exists the garage, and on top of it there is a bedroom, and the bedroom is recessed eight feet in, in on top of the of that garage. So what we're planning or hoping to do is just to build a wall. Odd, you know, on the borderline of the front, and then another one on the side of the house to, to close that eight by 12 section to again to turn into a, a closet, a walking closet. I'm confusing you, right? <laughs> I'm confused. No, no, no. I, I'm actually looking at the picture you sent that it makes perfect sense to me. The um, so the, the, the house is currently brick and it looks like is that cedar shake or? Is your wood siding? Yes. So what is your plan for the exterior materials used on the I, we, on the proposed addition? We're gonna do a whole new siding. We're gonna reside the entire top. We're gonna keep the brick looking. We're gonna keep the Tudor looking, but we're gonna do a whole new siding all around the house. And again, unfortunately, uh, w this was our project number one when we moved in, but when we found out that this, this uh, problem exists and we hoped that it will, we thought it would be done sooner so that delayed the siding of the house. Um, and here we are almost two years after and we're still in, 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 the, in, in the hope that we can get this done so we can, you know, resize the entire house. You've got it. Are there, uh, let's just go around. Isaac Lebo, any questions? No questions. No questions. Um, who's, uh, Greg Brown, questions? Uh, no, no questions. Diana Rule? Yes, I have a question. Um, or, no, well, have you thought about putting a window in the front of the house in that closet, even if it's a fake window? I um, love you. Yes. We're going to move that window as a facade, just to keep the look. Yes, because if not, you've got, because it's not in your plan when I was looking. I know, I know. This was not maybe added, but thought of. You know, actually, my wife suggested maybe we should. And, and, and you know, I, I said, you know what? I like her. <laughs> okay. Well, 
<laughs> the, the, okay. <laughs> we decided, you know what, we, we, can, we can put a, a window in the front as a facade. I mean, my problem with that was, oh, it's not going to be um, um, a, a, a space that we can use for, uh, for, for you know, as, as, as part of the closet. But we, you know, we said, you know what, we can just, you know, just make it a facade window. Yeah, because you need it from for the aesthetic quality of it. Okay, you got it. <laughs> I'm all done. Um, that was all right, good. Dan, Dan Feldman? Questions? Ask me. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 no questions. Dan Fitt. Uh, Matthew Bandelt, questions? All right, I understand the application. Come on, Gary. Sorry, was that now? No, I, I have no questions. Sorry. Uh, Gary, Gary Negret? No. Oh. <laughs> what an uh, He was ready for you, Gary. Uh, OK. Um, Mr. Papetro, John Papetro, any questions? Just a little clarification on the siding for the second floor. Would you uh, clarify Cedar Shake or what you appear to show on your plan here, your page two of two? Clapboard siding, uh, be a little more specific. What are you going to do? Uh, um, honestly, Stereo or something different? No, honestly, we're going to explore um, uh, a high quality vinyl siding all around except the front. Okay, I understand that. And, and uh, also on Diane's question about a window for that room, I would say that would, uh, looks like it needs something there. It's just a large open space. Maybe you could get creative and put some kind of a stained glass window in there. Um, uh, hey, okay. I mean, I'm not recommending <laughs> I would say, yeah, we're just, more we're than just yeah. a big yeah, get, get more expensive, please. Okay. Hold on a second. Can I just, you said siding all around except the front. Yes. You're leaving the brick all around the bottom, right? Oh, no, the bottom, yes. We're not touching the bottom. The bottom, it, it's, it, I mean, the, the picture really does not do it any justice. The bottom of the house is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like a few farmers put this on the bottom. It's so uneven. It's so cute. It's like you know, like if I if I did that myself, that how it would look. I would not. So, but you're leaving the brick Absolutely. along the bottom. Absolutely. Not touching it. Oh. All right. Just the the the, 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 sh the shingles all around except for the front. So, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So what what are you gonna do with the front above the brick? The front we're gonna re um uh, uh, whatever you call it, repair it, fix it, replace rotten wood, uh, replace the uh, mold, whatever it takes, and and the uh, stucco. So why wouldn't you put? the same material all around? On the front? Oh, the stucco, uh, you mean uh, put vinyl Just on the front? So what's on the side? The side is the uh, cedar shingles. So why don't you just continue cedar shingle all around? One, honestly, it would be very expensive. Two, um, it will be very tough to maintain. You know, my neighbor has to paint his house almost every five years, and he said it cost him somewhere between ten to fifteen thousand dollars to do. Uh, when you can, we we, we looked at uh, buying a siding that looks exactly like shingles. Yeah, no. So I'm saying it may be better if you do the whole thing the same. Because we want to keep the Tudor integrity of the house. So the front, we're going to try to maybe like use um, maybe a little bit more high tech material uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to fix. But I would like to keep the look of the house, you know, that side, the, the total look, the two tone and, the, um, and, 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 and we, we, you know, we actually took some uh, recommendation and took some estimates for people to, uh, you know, to, to do exactly that. It's okay. not either, but you know. To look similar. Exactly. OK. All right, thank you. You are very welcome. OK, uh, Dylan, now is the time for any members of the public.
who have any questions for Mr. Yosef, raise your hand virtually, send in the chat, let us know. I'm showing no chats and no hand raising and nobody's dialed in. Okay, and so we'll just, for formality's sake, uh, ask anyone if they have any comments. Now is the time, raise your hand. Chat, nothing? No, I'm not showing anything. I think the last people are in our last two uh, applicants. Two applicants? Okay. So, Mr. Yosef, now is the time for just uh, any uh, closing statement. You don't, not required, optional. Um, and then we'll close the hearing and deliberate and vote. No, um, um, I, I just thank you for your uh, uh, time and uh, for putting me on the calendar today. All right, very good, you're welcome. So the hearing is now closed. We'll now entertain any board member deliberation, comment, and or a motion. I'll make a motion to approve with the provision that the uh, street face of the addition uh, contain a window to carry forward to the facade look. Second. Yeah, very good. I'll do a second. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, Greg Brown? Yes. Gary Negritz? Yes. Diana Rule? Yes. John Papitra? Yes. Isaac Lebo? Yes. Matthew Bandel? Yes. Chairman Allegra? Yes. Okay. So Joseph, you were approved. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Stay well. All right. Stay safe. Yes, thank you. Um, Good luck. All right. So we're going to move on now. Continue new business. Um, it's a matter of Christopher Aleppa, an application to permit the construction of a second floor dormer on the rear slope of the existing roof, which will result in a front yard setback of 40.5 feet, where 52.5 feet is required, a rear yard setback of 25 feet, where 30 feet is required at 322 Stillwell Place, Block 4102, Lot 8, in an R2 zone. And who do we have this evening? Mr. Aleppo, you on? I'm on. Can you hear me? We, so it seems like you're on both the computer and the phone. I just hung so up the I phone. Think, yeah. All right, so you're just on the computer. All right, good, because we had that, that feedback. Um, is there anyone else that's going to be testifying this evening? Yes, I, I have uh, Vince Chaffee. He's the architect. And I have the contractor here, Anthony Aluto, if there's questions about uh, the scope of, of the uh, uh, project. All right, so we're just gonna have to get everybody sworn in. If each of you would raise your right hand, please. You Can swear? you guys see me or or no? No, okay. No. But you can hear me. You. Okay. We can hear you. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Okay. One at a time, give us your name and your address. Christopher J. Aleppa. 322 Stillwell Place in Ridgewood. Thank you. Next. Anthony Aluto, 96 Washington Avenue, Westwood, New Jersey. Next. Uh, Anthony. Vince, you, uh, they're looking for you to uh, be sworn in, Vince. No, Anthony. Oh. Oh. Uh, Anthony Aluto, 96 Washington Avenue, Westwood, New Jersey. That one's showing muted. We're having some trouble with, I think, oh, Mr. Aluto's audio. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, he's dialed in twice. So, Mr. Aluto, if you are in um, on the phone and via the computer, you're going to need to log yeah, off of I, one of them. Yeah, I, just mo I moved away. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. 
Uh, my name is Anthony Aluto, 96 Washington Avenue, Westwood, New Jersey. All right, so I think um, Mr. Wicker is going to qualify any experts. Yes, have the architect give us their qualifications and background. I don't hear Vince. Uh, he just texted he's having microphone trouble. He's going to use the phone. He's going to call in on the phone right now. Sorry. My apologies, guys. It's okay. Hello. That's Vince. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I had to dial in on phone. I had some microphone issues. Mr. Siafi, could you give us your professional um, uh, and educational background in connection with your field of architecture? Uh, yes, I have. Um, a Bachelor of Environmental Design degree from Miami University in Ohio, a Master's of Architecture degree in Miami University in Ohio, both uh, in the late 70s. I'm licensed in the states of New York, New Jersey, and NCARB. I've been licensed in the state of New Jersey since 1983. And in the course of the work that you do, you've been qualified as an expert witness before land use boards? Yes, many times. And your architectural licenses are in effect, correct? Correct. If there's any questions by board members or members of the public in connection with Siapi's credentials, if there being none, he can testify and uh, render an opinion in that field. Any questions? He's so qualified. Let's proceed. So, would you like me to start talk talking? Okay. Yes, talk. Talk. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, once again, I'm Chris Aleppa. So um, we purchased 322 Stillwell Place. Uh, it's on Stillwell. It's on Stillwell Place, which is a very narrow road. Uh, uh, speaking to Leslie years ago, and this is the house that we purchased. Uh, it used to be a two-way road, which I find hard to believe since it is so narrow. So it's a one-way road now. Um, we're trying to keep the house essentially looking the same. We don't want to have this big McMansion type house. We want to have something that fits into the community in the neighborhood. So in doing that, we found a house. Um, we submitted plans essentially just to do more of a gut inside uh, and work with the upstairs um, uh, living space, the attic, which was being used as a bedroom upstairs but um, to walk up the stairs was very even difficult you know the headroom wasn't there so what we wanted to do was to do a, uh, a small addition or not addition dormer uh, keeping the four existing walls just the way they were not going outside of the four walls and from there uh, use the dormer and then have a living space that was accessible or, or uh, able to work with as far as the setbacks, as far as the um, uh, where we got caught up with, and we, we didn't know we were going to have an issue when we submitted, I would like to, to leave that to um, Vince Chaffee, since he has all the knowledge in that. He's been talking to the building department. Uh, if that's all right, would, is it okay to turn that over to him at this time? 
Certainly. Sure. Um, okay, thank you. Um, it's a, it's a very strange property in, fe, uh, in that the, the uh, front yard set, required front yard setback and required rear, set, uh, rear yard setback actually overlap. Um, so we have zero, zero space to build. Um, the entire house is, is non-conforming uh, to the zone. Uh, when we started to work on the house, we were trying to work within the space that we had, um, you know, because we wanted to keep it to a, you know, modest renovation. And it turned out that um, uh, the upstairs, although finished and open uh, as living space, really was, it didn't meet code in any, any, uh, any fashion. Um, it was one big open room, and we wanted to create two bedrooms up there. And when we did that, we lost its grandfather status. Uh, we had no way to get egress windows in. Uh, the stair was too steep. The headroom clearance on the stair was inadequate. Uh, so I was able to design uh, the house so that I would not, um, I would not uh, interfere with the existing ridge line. So the house has not created any new height. Um, the dormer is all within the, the rear slope setback or the rear slope of the roof um, and um, just sort of works itself in, gives us enough room to, to get uh, two bedrooms and straighten out the stair problems and, um, and uh, you know, get really what we want to get out of the house uh, from the front you wouldn't know we were doing any work at all. Um, from the rear, you'll see, uh, you know, very uh, low profile dormer that fits nicely into the roof, we think. Um, I don't, I think that basically describes what we're trying to do. Correct to say that the dormer that you're proposing uh, does not uh, go outside the footprint of the existing dwelling unit? That is correct. Everything is within the existing uh, footprint. Actually, Vince, we're staying in a foot, I believe, too. We're coming in a little bit off it. Uh, yeah, we are. We're not going out to the edge of the back wall. Siding on the dormer going to match the existing siding? Yes. Okay, we'll just go around. Isaac Lebo, do you have any questions? that the properties get quite a few trees. I noticed there was some work done um, removing branches on some of the large trees. Are you guys going to be removing any of the large vegetation to add the dormer? I could, bar I could barely hear the question. Did you say, uh, ask if we were going to put vegetation in to hide the dormer? No, no. Um, I was asking, I noticed that you, can you hear me any better? Are you? Yes. Okay. Um, Chris, can you hear? Yeah, it's very hard to hear Isaac. I can hear him now though. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, my question was uh, pertaining to existing vegetation, mainly the, the large trees that you have behind the house. Are you having to remove any of uh, the trees to add this? No, uh, no, we, uh, we had to trim up a couple of lower limbs that were dead. Uh, and there was a, another tree, but not right in the back, that was removed, that was rotten, been dead probably seven years. Nothing stays. The big, massive trees will be there. You won't know that anything's been removed except for the lower limb. Okay. It was and I can't recall, what is directly behind, because I don't see it on the pictures here, what's directly behind the house? As far as, so there's, uh, that, those houses are the ones that are on Maple Avenue. So I think it's a couple Ridgewood, and then on the other side are a couple Glen Rock houses. Okay. Um, all right. I don't have any additional questions at this time. All right, thank you. Gary Negret, any questions? No. Greg Brown. No, nope, no questions. Okay, Diana Rule. No questions. Um, 
Dan Perlman. No questions, thank you. Matthew Bandelt. No questions, thank you. And Jonathan Pepitro. Uh, no questions, thank you, uh, well presented. Okay, so now we're gonna open it up to members of the public. If there's anyone out there listening who has a question of the applicant or the architect, now is the time, please virtually raise your hand and in the chat, let us know you want to speak. We will unmute you. Dylan, anyone? I'm not showing anybody. All right, anyone with questions, same thing. Virtually raise your hand, send us a chat, let us know you want to be heard. No one? No. Okay, so we'll turn it back to the applicant. Um, now is the time for any additional uh, testimony or if you're done uh, presenting your application, you can make a closing statement and then we'll close the hearing. I don't have anything to say except I think that it, it's a uh, nice addition with everything being updated and redone. Uh, it fits into the community, it fits into the street, nothing that's overbearing. Um, and uh, as far as an addition goes or any kind of remodeling, it, it, it works really, uh, really nice. Um, I don't have anything else. I don't know if Anthony, if you had something to say. No, I'm okay. Okay, we will close the, the hearing now and open it up to board members to comment, deliberate or move, uh, make a motion. I think a motion to approve, um, given the uh, existing location of the property and that it does not uh, exacerbate any conditions. A second. So that was Isaac? Okay. Isaac second. All right, um, Greg Brown? Yes. Gary Negritz? Yes. Diana Rule? Yes. John Papitra? Yes. Isaac Lebo? Yes. Matthew Bandel? Yes. Chairman Allegra? Yes. All right, Mr. Lepa, you're approved. Good luck with your renovation. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for your case. And Jane, thank you for putting up with my stress. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. So, thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Bye bye. All right. So, I'm going to give everyone just a five minute uh, bio, or I'm going to go get another thing of water break. Um, and then we'll resume with the last application of the evening, which is the warden matter. Okay. I might as well mute. Intermission.
Hey, Sarah Jo. Just want to let you know, I only have 3% on my iPad. If I die, I'll come back on another computer, but just giving you this <laughs> I'm charging, but it, it keeps going down even with the charger on. So. All right. So, Duly so noted. That's, that's the. I'm in a somewhat similar situation, but I probably have an hour, so. Oh, no, I've, I've got 3%. <laughs> Oh my I was goodness. at five, four. So you I thought I had video. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming if I stop video, it would be better. I wouldn't lose it as quickly. Yeah, has to be. Yeah, All so right. I, don't so I just checked. I'm at 48% on my phone. So that's good. I'll have to switch. So if I go, I'm going to have to rejoin. Okay. Sergio, before we get going, I'm having some difficulty hearing Isaac, he sounds very muted. Everybody else is very clear, but Isaac, I, very muted, very low. Yeah, that's a fair point. Isaac, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We yeah, so you're definitely, you're definitely light. Um, so if you could speak, like when you're going to speak, get close to the whatever microphone you have. Is it better when I'm like this? Um, uh, uh, a little bit. <laughs> You can go to settings and turn up the volume on the mic. Okay. Let me try that. What I do is I call in. Um, just this way I use my, my headset and I call in, but that's optional, obviously. Wow, that is some, Greg, that looks amazing. <laughs> nice. Wish I was there. Yeah, you guys are all yeah. welcome. You can all come up if you want. <laughs> why he's at this meeting, I have no idea. I know. <laughs> yeah, Greg, that's that's why we have that's why we have uh, alternates and uh, multiple. You know, a large enough board. You can oh, take your entitled to a vacation. You can have a I vacation. Needed, I needed a little break from the kids, so it's been good. Oh, although it is my. Although I'm getting the stink eye, it's my son's birthday, and uh, I'm down here instead of <laughs> there with him. But it, yep. it happens. No better, Sergio. Right. I know I'm terrible. So um, Diane, I know you. We can't see you because of your um, battery issue. Dan Perlman, are you? Are you in front of the computer yet? Because you're. All right. So he may need another minute. I'm Let's here. Dan. Yep. Gotcha. All right, we'll get started as soon as Dan, as uh, soon as we see Dan. Dan, is that you? Send that text. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were waiting for me. Nope, just making sure. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. So we will get started on the last matter of the evening. This is Gregory and Anastasia Warden. An application to permit the construction of an in ground swimming pool with spa, patio, and barbecue area within the front yard setback, which is not permitted and which will result in a front yard setback of 11 feet to the pool, 14 feet to the patio, 23 feet to the pool equipment, where 40 feet is required, and a fence wall height, which exceeds what is permitted, at 320 Fairway Road, block 3604, lot one in an R1 zone. 
Okay, so who do we have uh, this evening? Everybody else has to come on. Yeah. All right, so we've got Mr. Rutherford, I see. It's everyone. Okay. All right. Mr. Rutherford? Yes. Can you hear us? Thank you, right. Chairman and members of the board. I assume you can all hear me. Yes, I hope. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I'm accompanied this evening uh, virtually, I guess, uh, by my clients, Gregory and Anastasia Warden, uh, Len D. Tommaso, their landscape architect. He's actually physically with them at the moment, and Joseph Burgess, our professional planner. So I just want to make sure that they have all been unmuted and are part of our... Mm -hmm. I assume I am. Mr. Yes, Burgess is here. Can you Thank hear you. us? I can hear you loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I believe Mr. and Mrs. Warden and Mr. D. Tommaso, you were there as well? Yes. yes, can you hear us? Yes, we can. I can. Mr. Chairman, can the board hear my witnesses? I could, I could hear everyone. So why don't we just get everyone sworn in and move That's forward. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ward, uh, Mr. DiTomaso, and Mr. Burgess, if you would raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, each of you, starting with Mr. and Mrs. Warden, give your full name and address. Uh, Anastasia Warden, 320 Fairway Road, Ridgewood. Gregory Warden, 320 Fairway Road, Ridgewood. Lenny D. Tommaso, 30 Franklin Ave, Oakland. And Joe Burgess, 41 Locust Lane, Saddle River. Thank you. Mr. Rutherford, please proceed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll be very brief with the opening statement. I realize that the hour is late and the virtual process has significant constraints, but what we are dealing with here is an undersized lot for the R2 zone. It has an irregular shape and it is a corner lot to boot, which means it has to have two front yard setbacks. The property has been before the board previously. I attached to my application copies of resolutions adopted by the board, I think 14 and 16 years ago, where the board acknowledged the constraints of the property. And as Mr. Allegra just indicated, we are looking to install a swimming pool and spa and related patio and barbecue area in the rear of the property. You'll see, and Mr. DiTomaso will explain to you, because of the undersized nature of the property and its shape, the property gets progressively narrower as it proceeds to the south. We simply cannot comply with the required setback, which is 40 feet from Northern Parkway. So we're really here for, for one variance, in a sense, in that the, there are encroachments of the pool and related amenities into the front yard setback, We've kind of set forth those out, and Mr. DiTomaso and his plan has set those out for you, just so you know kind of what elements they are, the pool itself, you know, the pool equipment, the patio, et cetera, so you kind of get an idea. But it's basically a single variance. It's the front yard setback variance. The second variance that was referred to has to do with the pool. As you all know, we are required to comply with state standards with respect to fencing. There's an existing fence atop a retaining wall and as you are well aware the combined the height of that uh, structure for zoning purposes is the combination of the wall and the fence so to the extent that the replacement of that existing fence requires variance relief we see as well when the application was originally filed we sought uh, we sought two very minor coverage type variances uh, since the filing of the application and the preparation of the plan that you have in front of you those variances were eliminated. And you'll see in the upper left portion of Mr. DiTomaso's plan, he has provided a very detailed uh, coverage uh, analysis and calculation to demonstrate that we meet all of the coverage provisions of the ordinance, which I would submit is a bit unusual. Um, the proposed amenities, and Mr. DiTomaso will tell you this, are not unusual. The pool is not large. It's only 530 square feet where 800 square feet is, is very common. So we think really we are here because of factors relating to the property as opposed to the improvements that are planned. I'm sure the board is familiar with the Northern Parkway roadway. 
Uh, there are houses to the east and the south. We comply with all of those setback requirements. Where we encroach is on the Northern Parkway side. And as you all know, on the other side of Northern Parkway is the Veterans Field and related parking area. Mr. Di Tommaso is gonna to show you an exhibit that shows the extensive landscaping that's proposed that will effectively totally screen the installation from the view of the street, which works to the advantage and the benefit of my clients as well as passersby. Um, and I mentioned a moment ago, the, the replacement of the existing fence. So we have testimony from Mr. D. Tommaso and Mr. Burgess. Uh, we may have some very brief testimony from Mr. Warden with respect to a few photographs that he took relating to a very similar installation. Uh, that is a pool in the rear yard of a home on a corner lot, actually at the corner of a Colonial Road and Collingwood Place, which is really just, literally just around the corner. Uh, so he has some pictures that he will deal with that. As well. So I'd like to proceed, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you please, with the testimony of Mr. D. Tommaso. And as he gets ready, uh, he will be referring to a two-page plan that he has prepared for the record. It's entitled Landscape Plan. The original preparation date was August 5th, 2019. The most recent revision date was March 10th, 2020. And attached to that is a drainage plan. Again, original preparation date, August 5th, 2019. Last revised, November 15th, 2019. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on the drainage. Uh, we just wanted to the board to know that attention has been paid to that detail of this plan. Uh, we certainly expect that if the board were to act favorably upon our application, one of the conditions would be compliance with all the stormwater management regulations of the Village of Ridgewood. So with that having been said, uh, and again, to streamline things a bit, uh, Mr. Whitaker, I believe Mr. D. Tomaso has appeared before this board on a number of prior occasions, has been qualified as an expert in the field of land architecture, and I would offer him again in that discipline. Yes, Mr. D. Tommaso has been qualified as an expert witness in the field of landscape development and architectural elements. Uh, unless there's any questions by board members or members of the public, he can be so qualified this evening. There's being no questions, let's proceed. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Um, I've instructed my witnesses uh, that they will proceed in narrative fashion this evening. I may have a few questions when they're done. But in order to kind of move things forward, they're just going to proceed and start telling you about the project. So, Mr. D. Tommaso, uh, please proceed with your testimony. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, back in uh, last August, when the uh, wardens called me, they asked me to develop a uh, backyard use space for them, and they wanted it to include a pool, uh, barbecue areas, and and some other nice elements. We walked around for about five minutes and I told them, you know, you have two front yards. And they're like, what is two front? What do you mean I have two front yards? I have a backyard. So I explained to them that whole situation. They wanted to proceed with uh, including a pool in their design. So in that content, I located a pool, trying to locate it behind the back backyard, if you want to call it, portion of the house. Not on the, it's very difficult to put it on the Northern Parkway side to begin with. The Northern Parkway site right now exists with existing patios. It has a existing masonry barbecue, which does not comply. It's inside the setback. And we removed all of that and got everything to comply with building coverage, impervious coverage. I located a pool for them, a small pool, as Mr. Rutherford said, 530 square feet. Uh, the pool, it's like, I think, 36 feet long, and, yep, 36, and the widest point is about 21 feet, so if anyone that has a pool knows that this is kind of a small pool, but it's a tight space, but I did give them a pool. It's completely screened from the street. If anyone visited the site, you could see that the street is about eight feet below the existing lawn area so it's and there's 25 foot evergreens there now and plenty of vegetation already but we are increasing the amount of vegetation to further screen this project from the street mm -hmm. uh there's presently a set of steps going down to the street with a gate from their backyard heading toward northern parkway 
That's going to be removed. We're going to close that wall um, and create a lawn space on that side. No more um, pervious, no more patios on that side, just strictly grass over there. Um, pool equipment, you know, we're going for a variance for the setback on that. A heater has to be six, week, six feet from a window. It was very difficult to locate this heater in any other spot. I tried everywhere on this site to, to locate this without going outside of building setbacks and putting it near windows. So that's why I located it where it is. And we're gonna screen that out. Um, could also notice on my plan, there's an, a, an outdoor kitchen type of a setup, a little bar that's inside the setbacks. They have an existing raised patio right now. And after I designed the outdoor kitchen they wanted, it brought us over on building coverage. So we made the decision to remove this raised patio that's over eight inches above grade to comply so that we can, can indeed install this uh, bar outdoor kitchen type of space for them. Um, I don't know what else to say. There's a small patio back there. Um, fence, fence details on there. The fence is four and a half feet high. It's going to be pool compliant. It's going to be on top of the wall, just as the existing fence is now. Um, um, I think that's about it for me. And just a couple of questions, Mr. D. Tommaso, so that we're clear. Uh, your plan and I'm referring to the landscape plan or the, the plan designated as landscape plan, shows the edge of the property. And that's that very heavy dashed line, correct? correct? And then you also show in the lighter line where the words Northern Parkway, that's the edge of the pavement of Northern Parkway. Is that correct? That is correct. So all of your setbacks, and you've just tried, as I indicated in my opening, you've tried to do a set of representative setbacks, if you will, for the pool and, and the related structures and equipment to give some idea of you know, how far these are set back from the road. But the roadway is quite a bit further off of the property line, isn't that correct? Yes, in yeah. some areas 12, 13 feet. Okay, for example, in the uh, about halfway <laughs> down the Northern Parkway elevation, it shows two existing oaks. That, that's probably the, the, the point where the, uh, the, the pavement of Northern Parkway that's farthest from the property line. Is that right? Correct. About okay. 14 feet there. Okay. And just to orient the board, you'll see those steps that are a little bit further to the south of those trees. It says remove existing steps and stepping stones. That's like a little stairway that goes down into the right of way right now. That's going to come out. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And you also, just to point out to the board, I'm sure they've seen it, but in a dotted line, you've shown the front uh, side, uh, the front setback on Fairway Road and Northern Parkway, and then the side on the east and the rear yard setback on the south. So that's kind of a relatively small triangular area, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, and actually was the source of variance relief granted by this board a number of years ago to permit some expansions to the home. Um, you, you testified earlier that the side yard setback for all of these improvements, and by that, the side yard mm -hmm. being the easterly portion of the property, everything complies with the required side yard setback in that particular location, correct? For that pool, is correct. patio, yes. yep. barbecue, everything. Yes. And we also um, comply to the rear yard setback as well for all of the improvements that we're proposing. Yes. Okay. What's located uh, between the pool and the southerly property line? Uh, what, what's in that area? Between, well, the driveway to the house, the garage is there. There's the driveway. And between the pool and there's a wall, with the existing retaining wall with vegetation on top. Okay. How high is that? How high is that wall approximately? Okay. So the wall... It's, it, it's, it meets grade about where the entrance is up by the garage. And then down by the street, it's about three and a half feet high to the top of the wall. And then the wall stays consistently about three foot nine, three foot 10 feet high all the way to uh, Fairway Road. And then there's a double tier on the corner of Fairway. Okay. And then the property slopes from the wall to Northern Parkway. 
uh, giving us about an eight foot elevation grade from Northern Parkway to the top of the wall. Seven okay. feet, six, 10, some areas, it, it varies. Okay. And there's, you testified earlier that there's already a fence on top of that retaining wall approximately four feet in height. Correct. But that okay. fence does not meet pool code, so we have to change it. Okay. And the pool code, you've shown a detail for the fence that we're proposing in the uh, upper central portion of your plan. Yes. That's a compliant, for all intents and purposes, four foot high compliant pool fence. It's four and a half feet high. And actually our fence guy showed that fence to Paula and she said that fence complies, yes. Okay. All right. And then I'd like you to talk just a little bit more about the land. And I think you have a rendering, uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman. I, I don't know if the board is, is, has been in, the, in uh, the practice of offering the share screen feature, but Mr. DiTomaso has, has a colored rendering of the plan that you have in front of it, identical to what you have in front of you. It's just a colored rendering that might be helpful to the board. If we're able to do that, we are prepared to put that up. If not, I'll have Mr. DiTomaso just testify to it. You can put it up. I think, I, but I think we have it. There we go. Yeah, we, well, you do. We, uh, we have this. Oh, you do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. It's, um, yeah, does every, uh, well, you, you can show it anyway, but yeah, we have this. I appreciate that. I'm it, it, keeping track of, of plans and exhibits and whether they're posted or not is a little bit challenging these days. Okay, Mr. D, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. D. Tommaso, why don't you just walk the board quickly through uh, what's there? You've, you've made an attempt here to show what's there, correct? Yes. And what's also proposed. So maybe right on the west the side where West. Northern Parkway is, you can see the existing evergreens on the corner there. There's one, two, three, there's six. One, two, three, four, five large spruces. There's oaks. Um, underneath that, that, underneath those trees are some larger, ve large vegetation, like six to seven foot high, like viburnums and nice ve vegetation coming up. And then you can see some rows. I'm proposing to add like arborvitaes and plant material to further screen that off. So the view from Northern Parkway is completely blocked. Um, on the east side, you can see a row of evergreens like arborvitae. I have to use tall, skinny plants because there's just no room for wide plants to grow here. So I'm screening the uh, property. And there's a lot of vegetation on that side too, on the neighbor's side. But we've increased, uh, we've added some more plant material there. And uh, same thing with the pool equipment. We plant around the pool equipment to uh, screen that from inside and I really don't think anyone's going to see it from the street. And that's that's the function of the existing landscaping, the proposed landscaping, the difference in elevation between the property and the roadway of Northern Parkway and also to, to a certain extent the distance between the property line and the edge of the pavement. Yep, correct. Okay, and that's obviously been done not only for to shield it from the view of passersby but also to give our clients a, a degree of privacy and enjoyment for this area in the back of their house. Correct. And, and you testified that I think along the perimeter at least of the pool area in Northern Parkway and, and, and the inside of the, the fence surrounding the pool and its uh, southwesterly corner, those are evergreens and along the easterly property line are evergreens. What are, what are other, there are some other representative plantings on there? Yeah, so in, in front of the evergreens would be some decorative plant material, flowering shrubs, perennials that would be enjoyable from the pool area. And so given the choice of the plantings, the pool is really going to be effectively screened from view 365 days a year, correct? correct. It won't be affected by seasonal leaves come off in the fall and come back no, in the spring. That is correct. It'll be screened okay. all year. And I, you, you mentioned this briefly, but in my opening statement, I, I mentioned that a 530 square foot pool is, is uh, you know, on the smaller side. And you, you do a lot of these, I know. Uh, what, what do you commonly see for a, for a pool size in a um, residential situation? Like you said earlier, 800 square feet, 20 by 40, even free forms, 44 feet long, you know, 24 feet wide. So it's, it's, it's small, but it's a small piece of property. So we had to design it to, to fit and to, to work with this piece of property. Okay. Um, 
And just to confirm, we I don't think we necessarily, we're certainly not gonna go through all the coverage numbers. There's, there's they're mind boggling up there, but uh, there's a lot of numbers. And I, just to confirm what I said in my opening, we comply with all the coverage requirements of the ordinance, correct? Yes. And you've given drainage some thought and are satisfied that if the board were to act favorably upon our application, we can indeed comply with all of the requirements of the village engineering <laughs> department with respect to stormwater management. Absolutely. Okay. That's all I would have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Um, now we'll open it up for questions. Uh, Gary Negrix, some questions? No question. Hang on here. Let me see if I could. Jonathan, Petro, any questions? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, no questions. It's a very nice plan, and I appreciate all of the uh, landscaping work in addition to the fitting everything onto the property. Very good. Isaac Lebo, any questions? No questions. <clears throat> okay, uh, Greg Brown. Just uh, one question. When you were looking at the like where to sort of place the pool. Did you look at anything to sort of place it, you know, more of it inside that 40 foot line? Because the majority of the pool is outside. I did. You know, there's, there's maybe three feet of it that's inside, which would be 30 some odd of it. There's outside. access point, there's a gate and access point to get to the garage. So I did not want mm -hmm. to block that. I'm, I'm actually encroaching it a little bit now. If you can see where the gate is, can you see where yep. the gate is? Yep. So yep. if I kicked it further down, I think they'd have to really walk around the pool more to get to their cars. And that was the reason I put it where it is. Okay, thanks. Matthew Bendel. Uh, no, I had the same question as Greg, but um, I understand the answer. Okay. Um, Diana Rule. Yeah, I've got two questions. Um, the fence. Is, is it going to sit right on top of the wall? No, it's it's going to be in concrete footings right behind the wall. Okay, I just, and Jane, maybe you, I think I thought it had to be a certain number of feet back from the wall. Um, if yeah, I remember but, the code, we've had this issue before. You can't put a fence right on top of a wall. It has to be set back. Well, Diane, that's why they're seeking variance relief. Right. No, no, I know, but, but that's not what the relief is for. The relief is for the height of, it's, Right now, it shows like it's right on top of the wall. No, it's it's set back off the wall. It's not in the concrete. But it's the combination of the wall. It would destroy the wall. It's the combination of the wall and the fence. The different, there's a different variance for the combination of the two for the height versus the setback of it. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a setback requirement for it, not just the height requirement. Right, but that's the, it's the requirement is that the comp, the, the combination right. doesn't if exceed the height. If there's a setback that it meets the setback, then there's no variance by height. Right. Okay, so you're saying, all right, I would thought it was two separate because the height of the wall plus the fence needs a setback. No, the it's height the of the wall plus the height of the fence, when there's no setback that's code that's ordinance compliant results in the height being higher than is permitted. Okay, all right, thank you, Bruce. No problem. Okay, so they are, <clears throat> I guess then my question is, why can't they move it back the foot that is required? I think it's more feet. Yeah, it's four feet, I think it compromises the landscaping. Yeah. Well, the, lands the landscaping is new. All right. I just uh, the, but there are hollies. You can see the hollies along the, the corner there. Those are not new. Those are existing. 
I actually went down with this plan and spoke to Paula, Paula and Paula said this would work. So I, I, you know, if there's an issue, I mean, let me know. No, no, it, it works with the variants. Yeah. Yes, we acknowledge, we acknowledge we need a variance and, and I, I appreciate what Mr. Whitaker said. I think he's, his interpretation is exactly correct. Yes. That when you have a fence, I'll say for lack of a better word, in the vicinity of a wall, the height is the combination of the fence and the wall unless the fence is set back from the wall a distance equal to its height correct and then it then it complies okay thank you Sorry, and, and maybe i confused that and i didn't want to if i did i that was not my intent no no you guys helped thank you um the other one i had is the zoning table and maybe someone can help me the, the pool is included in coverage by all improvements is that correct Pool's just impervious, I thought. But isn't that coverage? I don't know, Jane, I'm asking. That's my it question. Can't, yeah, the pool counts. Yes. And it, and is included in the calculation. Correct. So you're removing, so right now, if you, you're at, and I'm looking at the handwritten zoning table. Is that the right one? It may not be. Um, no. No, mine's all typed up. All right, I'm trying, that's... No, no, because the plan was, Ms. Rule, the plan was revised after that was submitted. Right. What you need to refer to is Mr. Uh, DiTomaso's plan in the upper left corner. And you'll see when he does the coverage by improvement calculation, he has an entry for the pool, the patio, and uh, kitchen area. So that's the, the answer to your question is yes, that is included in the coverage by improvement calculation. Because the existing, so... Your existing, so you don't have a zoning table. So right now you're. Mr. DiTomaso's landscape plan shows the coverage, but it's not on the chart for all the other. I know, and that's what I'm trying. I was looking at the chart and it shows an increase in the above grade cover of all improvements of only 235 feet. I was just going to try to have him explain to me. The, the building coverage, you mean? No. Now, Mr. Rutherford, in his opening, stated that the coverage will meet the ordinance requirements as per Mr. DiTomaso's landscape plan uh, calculations. So that supersedes what's on the chart. That I know. I'm trying to understand, trying to make sure that they're correct. <clears throat> Excuse me, Bruce, I could help when it's my turn yeah, to testify. Yeah, I'll leave it, Mr. I'll, I know the answer too, Mr. Burgess, but I'll leave it to you, please. Okay. Diana, why don't we hold that in abeyance and we'll have- Yeah, Mr. please, Burgess go right ahead. You guys can continue. I'm just going to figure it out now. All right, so I think I went through all of the board member questions. So we'll open it up to members of the public who have questions for Mr. DiTomaso, the landscape architect. Is your hand virtually, chat, is there anyone doing? Can I come back in again? I'm sorry. Jane, you said the pool is included in impervious. Yes. In, yes. What, what's it included in? In, in total improvement coverage. Right. So I'm looking at his chart. Which chart? The chart on the drawing, right? Not, not the handwritten one. No, the one on the drawing. Right. Look at proposed within 140 foot line and go down the chart, you'll see pool, patio, kitchen, 1,554 square feet. So you're removing, <clears throat> you're removing a significant brick? Like well, how, how, if you look at the numbers from existing, what I needed to ask you was from existing to new, yes. there's only an increase of 200 square feet. Correct. Where, how does that come about? Where if you, the entire right side of the property, the, I'm sorry, the 
the west side of that property, it's it's hard to see on this plan. It's in a, it's ghosted in. It's all brick pavers. So we're removing all that. There's also a brick. Look on the look on the uh, east side of the house. Red brick to be removed. There's a walkway coming in from the side there. That that's all being removed. So I have removed quite a bit of existing paver patio to comply with this plan we have here. Mr. D. Tommaso, in your plan where you show existing lot coverage, existing lot coverage over the total lot, you have an entry there for rear red, I'm sorry, rear red brick, 1,172 square feet, correct? Yes. That's the area that you just referred to. That's what you were referring correct. to a moment ago. Correct, and that's all coming out. And when you see your proposed lot total, you say rear red brick zero because that's all been removed. Correct. And so you're increasing, the, but the pool, patio, and kitchen now are 1554. Correct. Correct. It, so did, in, it did increase a little bit, but it still complies. No, no, I understand. I'm just. Yeah, the, if you went to the site, you'd see there's a lot of pet. Half of this backyard's paved. Do you, do you want to? Do you have pictures of existing? I, I, we have some pictures pet. of existing. Just trying to, I'm just comparing. And you're getting rid of the stepping stones, the slabs. Yep. And and also a portion of that raised existing landing that 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 blue stone landing that up to against the house if you could see a dotted in a dotted line it goes all the way across the back of the house we're removing that and we're just putting in a set of steps coming off the two doors so all that was removed that got me to comply with building and impervious as well okay got it thank you you're welcome Okay, so we were we we're opening it up for members of the public if they had any questions. I nice showed no public people on. Nope. So there's nobody on other than the people testifying right now. Correct. All right. So then that's going to go for you. Let me know if anybody joins, but I'm not going to ask Bruce unless you think I should. Any more questions about who's got a comment or a question? Unless somebody no, dials. No, in. we can we can proceed with the next witness. Okay, Ms. Rutherford. We have Mr. Burgess, he's already been sworn. We're offering Mr. Burgess as a professional planner. I think his qualifications are, are without question in the state of New Jersey, and I'd ask him to be accepted as an expert in the field of professional planning. Mr. Burgess has been previously qualified before this board as an expert witness in the field of land use planning. And Mr. Burgess, nothing has changed in connection with your credentials since the last time you appeared before the board, correct? That is correct. Okay. And with that said, uh, we can accept him tonight if, or, as an expert in that field, and he can render a professional opinion in that field. Please proceed. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, when David first called me about this application, he had asked if I could just run through the statutory criteria and how this application meets it. Um, Len gave a very good description of the project, so I'm not going to go through all that again. And David, and I think the chairman also commented about all the variances that are required of the application. Uh, when I talk about the statutory criteria, I would ask that you consider four particular issues that really weave through the whole issue of um, why I feel from a professional point of view that this application should be granted. Uh, the site is undersized and it's irregular in shape, as you can see. Uh, there's a topographic differential that Len has already described. There's the site's location, particularly vis-a-vis -vis across the street from Northern uh, Parkway, where Vets Field is. And then there's an actual vehicular and pedestrian safety issue with respect to the removal of the steps to lead down from the applicant's property down to Northern Parkway, which is a significant benefit here. Um, and all that ties into the criteria. Now, I'm pretty certain that you're all familiar with what uh, with the criteria. Um, the statute identifies both the positive and the negative criteria. The positive being one of 
two alternative ways in which an applicant can address the positive criteria. Uh, in this instance, we're primarily talking about the physical features test. That basically, that's the C1 criteria. And that basically says that if there's physical features that affect the ability to comply, the board can consider the application uh, in terms of a, an approval. Uh, there's a second test, the public benefits test, and that indicates that if there are certain public benefits that will accrue from the grant of the variance relief, the board could also give consideration to that. Um, to a much, much lesser degree, I, would, I could also rely on that. Primarily, I'm going to focus on the C1 criteria. Uh, in addition to that positive criteria, however, there's also the negative criteria. And as you know, that's a twofold test. An applicant has to show that there's no substantial detriment to the public good, and an applicant has to show that there's no substantial impairment to the intent of the master plan. And the word substantial just isn't something that I am using. It comes right out of the statute. Um, so in terms of the basis for the variance relief that's being requested, you know, I believe that this is a classic C1 physical features argument. And there's two critical issues here. One is the issue of the undersized lot. Um, the Ridgewood Ordinance requires for a corner lot a 16,800 square foot lot. Uh, this property is 13,868 square feet in shape, in size. And its shape, as you can see from the exhibits before you, is somewhat irregular. It has a width along Fairway Road of only 101 feet. The rear lot line directly opposite that to the south is only 49 feet in dimension. Um, Northern Parkway frontage is about 145 feet. And the mean lot depth along Northern Parkway uh, measures about 87 feet. What's interesting is how the ordinance setback requirements affect the ability to comply. If you have a conventional 16,800 square foot lot, uh, um, rectangular shape in shape, you would end up having about 3,500 square feet <clears throat> of buildable area that you could use to put whatever it is you want to put in your backyard. But by virtue of the configuration of this lot and its dimensions and size, the wardens only have about 930 square feet in that area to play with. Um, that's significantly less than what the code permits, obviously. And in terms of the case law and the statutory burden in terms of physical features test, I think that is very applicable to uh, the way you should discuss this application at the end of the evening. Secondly is the issue of topography. When had it indicated, uh, there's about an eight foot <clears throat> drop from the developable part of the site down to Northern Parkway. Now, <clears throat> most ordinances um, require significant setbacks for swimming pools on corner lots because they wanna make sure certain that the pool is not visible from the sidewalk or the street. And usually that plays out when you have a flat piece of property adjacent to at the same at grade as the street. But in this case, we have this eight foot drop. And in addition to that, we have this significant landscape amenity that already exists on the property. And I think you could see that from some of the photographs that I had submitted earlier. And then secondly is the not only the existing vegetation, but the supplemental vegetation that Len has provided to make certain that from a visibility standpoint, no one walking down Northern Parkway or driving down Northern Parkway is going to see any on-site activity in this backyard. Now, there's another issue, and that is the fact that we are going to be eliminating that walkway down from the site, down the steps, to Northern Parkway. And for any of those uh, board members who have been to the site, you would know that uh, Northern Parkway moves traffic at a nice healthy clip. Um, there's a curve in the road right there. And I know I have walked up and down that sidewalk, at, that stairway a number of times. And as a car comes whizzing by, it's not the safest of conditions. So by virtue of eliminating that, that stairway, uh, it certainly represents a public benefit. 
Um, in terms of the negative criteria, um, there is no substantial detriment to the public good by virtue of the removal of the steps, for example, that represents a public benefit. Uh, the topographic differential that I mentioned earlier and the landscape amenity that's being provided results in all on-site activity being adequately screened from the street. And as Judge Harris often used to say, you have to look at an application and determine, does this represent a better zoning alternative? And in terms of providing additional screening to on-site activity on site um, and removing that walkway down to the street, this clearly does represent a better zoning alternative. In addition to that, I looked at the, bar the village master plan um, and enables me to conclude that there is no substantial impairment to the intent of the plan. One of the goals and objectives of the master plan is to preserve residential neighborhoods. And it talks about specifically how important it is that dem demolitions or replacements or additions maintain the character of the neighborhood. And that's clearly what is happening in this instance. Um, the, another, another goal of the master plan talks about avoiding negative impacts to nearby properties and streets. And for all that I've just said, I think it's clear that there is no negative impact. And in conclusion, I think it's enable, all this enables me to say that we meet the positive criteria, we meet the negative criteria, and it enables the board to approve this application. And if you do that, you'll be five for five for the night, which would be impressive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. I don't have any further questions for Mr. Burgess, Mr. Chairman. Can, uh, can you hear me? I switched headphones. Yes. <clears throat> okay, very good. Uh, question on whether or not the comparable pool photos that were sent via email are going to be presented as exhibits. Is that going to be uh, done at all or? Yeah, we can do that, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yeah, certainly. Mr. Warden took those photos. Uh, I think there were two photos, and uh, he's. He, I can just lay a quick foundation, and he can tell the board very briefly about it. Yes, if you'd like okay. to hear, I'm happy to do that. Not <clears throat> sure, because I I think they um, the questions that I have regarding those photos, um, maybe Mr. Burgess could address as well. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Warden, you were previously sworn. And I think we filed two photographs with the board uh, relating to a, a pool, a, a, a similar installation for a pool in, in the rear yard of a home on a corner lot, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. So why don't we start first of all and tell the board where the first photo you have on the, on the, uh, on the screen is great. Where is that property located? Uh, that's, <coughs> excuse me, on the corner of Collingwood and Colonial. Okay. And just orient us, where are we looking at the moment? Are we looking down? I'm, yeah, I'm standing at the corner, looking up on, um, looking up Collingwood. Okay, so we're looking north on Collingwood, looking somewhat to the northeast, and you can see the pool behind the black uh, estate type fence there, correct? Yep. Okay, good. And then why don't you go to the next photo? Right. There we go. Yes, and tell us uh, where where that's the same pool, correct? Same pool. Just I've walked up Collingwood, and I'm now looking backwards towards um, towards Colonial. Okay, and again, that uh, pool is uh, located behind a home, but we've only showed it simply because it's a similar type of situation, very close to your to your <clears throat> property, literally around the corner from your property. Yeah, right. if I may, David. Yes. Um, I think this exemplifies what I was speaking about earlier, because here you have a, a, a pool that is at grade with the sidewalk in the street, and you do have, you know, some, if, there is some visibility here. And in contrast, when you look at the photographs that I had submitted of the warden's property, there's a, 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 a wall of landscaping that you cannot see and will not see the pool and all the on-site activity um, on the warden's property by virtue of lens design. And that's a significant distinction between those photos and what's being proposed here. 
Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I appreciate that. That really was going to be my question, which is what are the differences between this pool, which is, you know, the pool is called the comparable pool versus what is being proposed because this pool here, you know, you can clearly see it from the road. Uh, this appears to be at a time of the year where, um, you know, everything is uh, at, at the height of its blooming um, and perhaps in the winter, you know, you're going to see even more of it. So I just wanted someone to testify that, you know, the proposed pool and uh, kitchen area is going to be more um, hidden by landscaping than, than this photograph. Yeah, I think the photo on the far left uh, that I had taken shows that. Um, and as Leonard indicated, you know, there's a, a variety of seasonal plantings here and he's supplementing them as well to make certain that everything on site is screened. In addition to that, we are relocating the existing barbecue, which is close to the fence on the Northern Parkway side, um, to the far side of the property. Um, so that could never be seen from the screen in, in this condition. We have two renderings that I did that will show you what their pool, our proposed pool will look like from <clears throat> Parkway right there. You want to show them the other one? And we have one other one we could show you. Yep. Right there. Impenetrable. Right. And those are existing trees on the corner, and we're going to add to it. Yeah, and those are deciduous, right, Len? No, they're not deciduous. Those are evergreens right there on the floor. I meant ever. There's two, old trees. There's two <laughs> old trees that drop their leaves, but we're going to put evergreens on top of the wall to, to back up that uh, deciduous vegetation. Oh, uh, yeah, though, these renderings are very helpful, and they're very different from what we see in that comparable pool photo. Mm -hmm. um, that's my question. Does any other board member have any questions? for uh, Mr. Burgess or anyone, anyone else. No one? Just make sure no one's raising a hand. All right, well, Mr. Rutherford, uh, there are no members of the public online. Uh, the board doesn't have any additional questions of any of your witnesses. Do you have any additional witnesses or uh, testimony? No, I don't really. I don't think anything to say, Mr. Chairman. I think the application has been, been uh, very, I hopefully very clearly presented to the board. I think you understand what the basis for our request for relief is, and we would ask the board to approve the application as as presented. And I thank you for your time this evening. Okay, great. Thank you. The hearing is now closed. Open it up for deliberations, comments, motion. Um, make a motion to approve. Submitted plans with a deed restriction that the plantings or, or plantings of similar, similar characteristics will be maintained for the life of the pool. Whatever that may be. So Bruce, that would be a deed restriction or a condition in the approval? Answer to that would be yes to both. It'd be a condition of the resolution that would then be done in the form of a deed restriction. All right, so, so we want to at least just ask, done, the, ask, I'm sorry. We've done this before where it will be running with the land, so it'll be a continuous obligation for the property owner to maintain that landscaping uh, to keep it um, so that it is not visible from the roadway. Very good. Before we move on to a second, I uh, just want to make sure Mr. Rutherford and the applicant uh, and basically, are understand what the restrictions are going to be. Yeah, I, I uh, Mr. Whitaker, I have done these with the board previously, and I have al always styled it as a deed memorializing conditions, which means that the uh, to which we attach the resolution as an exhibit, and and I make clear that it does not necessarily vest rights in the public, uh, but does uh, is is recorded so that future. Uh, the owners are aware of the action the board taken and the conditions it imposed. Correct. So that so that those conditions, so everyone understands it, 
are conditions when they are imposed that the village can enforce. Correct. And by running with the land, uh, members of the board, once again, no one can say that a new owner of the property, no one can say I didn't know that because it shows up in a search when they are purchasing the property. Correct. Yeah, I, I know I, 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 was, I, I can't consult with my clients, but I can, I can tell them just very briefly that uh, the board, this board does this regularly. And uh, to my mind, not a bad thing because it makes uh, all future owners of the property aware of the action the board took and the mm -hmm. conditions it imposed. And as Mr. Whitaker mm -hmm. just indicated, uh, it does eliminate the possibility of a future owner coming in and say, I didn't know. I didn't know I had to maintain those plannings. I didn't know I had to do this. Future owners will be aware of it. My clients, quite honestly, would have the obligation to disclose this to a future owner anyway, even if it were not a public record. So uh, I have no objection to that. Okay. So I'll with second. that, with that, it'll be a Greg seconding. Okay. Uh, Greg Brown? Yes. Gary Negritz? Yes. Diana Rule? Yes. John Papitro? Yes. Isaac Lebo? Yes. Matthew Bandel? Yes. Chairman Allegra? Yes. And we did go five for five. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations uh, to the wardens. Good luck. Enjoy that pool. Thank you, much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, all Good right. evening. So we don't have any resolutions to memorialize. We approve the minutes. Uh, when's our next meeting, Jen? Monday. Monday. We have meeting Monday night and Tuesday night. So we have a Monday and a Tuesday? Yes. All right. Yes. And I only Anybody? have two. I only have two on them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anybody who's not available, uh, just you know, shoot Jane a note and we'll just make sure we have a quorum. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. I got a quick question. Can oh, I? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Bruce, I was reading their old resolutions. Do we attach? We lost you. <laughs> Three percent gone. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. Do we put a copy of the zoning chart to the resolution? Is it something we can start here forward? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. So I can, you guys, I think can you guys hear Bruce? Bruce? I think Bruce left. I think Bruce. He, yeah. He, he didn't even off. say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure> <laughs> Irish goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Bruce. I'm just saying, because I was going through these um, previous resolutions in this case, and I would like to have seen what the zoning chart previously said versus what. And like we don't have it was marked as exhibit at the public hearing, but if it's not here, we don't have the whole file under this case. I would think that would be a good idea if there's no rule against it, we can request that it be done. Become yeah, it's definitely like something to ask. So let's bring that up with Bruce next meeting. It's a good idea. Yeah. That yeah. would so for this weird group with those numbers. And I couldn't go back and find it. Right. Because they had to get a gross building area variance last time. So it was like like I would like to see what the numbers were. Anyway, if you can ask, Sergio, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, well, we have found over time that some people's mathematics were memorialized but they weren't particularly accurate yeah no but it would be nice just as a comparison sake yeah again half the things were flooded out anyway so we don't have those yeah but all right I'll, I'll send them a note if possible just a thought thank you anyone else all right yeah. I 
motion to adjourn. Go celebrate your son's birthday. Greg, next time, yeah. a different background. <laughs> okay, I'll work on a better one next time. Yeah. <laughs> Keep you guys posted. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Dylan. Anytime.